kind of an exciting race. For the first time, the West Riders are on the track by themselves and start to sort themselves out. Rider number 125, Jeremy McGrath. Well, I think in Supercross, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, you don't have all the horsepower like the 250s do. And McGrath casts a quick look behind him. The only thing he sees is Steve Lampson. I guess if you're in that Honda pit or the Pro Circuit pit, you're mighty happy at this point. I wonder if McGrath is happy because uh, Lampson is a tough customer. And now we've got teammate after teammate. And what's going to happen? Uh, is he going to go for the pass? Will he do that more? And then uh, I'm sure that they'll be trying to win it. I think so, too. In fact, look at that. Lampson tried to put, and he did. He was successful. He put the move on McGrath, and it's at number 29. Steve is out of Pollock Pines, California, and right behind him, giving him everything that he wants in the way of a race. Number 125 is teammate Jeremy McGrath. McGrath is all over Lampson. Look at that. It's almost like Lampson is holding him up. Yeah, I think that uh, Jeremy has, has found his lines, and he's just basically getting into a better rhythm now, and he looks like he's really in the good There he spot. goes. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. Talk about the rhythm. Did he know that he would not make the pass? That's uh, looking very good. Um, I'm impressed with both of them. Oh, yeah. Lampson goes down low. McGrath went high. He got the drive out of that corner. And I think that we're looking at maybe one of those missed shifts because uh, Lampson was passed like he was standing still. Record flag behind him. As we see uh, McGrath feeling his oats a little bit off that big jump wave into the crowd. Boy, that's got to make you feel great when you have a lead that you can kind of play around with. I mean, McGrath with a wave to the crowd, a double bumper and a big number one. Takes the checkered at Utah. Jeremy, another victory for the Peak team, and your biggest competitor here was your own teammate. How did you lose that early lead, first of all? Well, I came around this corner over here. Things went a little bit slippery there, and I almost crashed. But uh, the Peak you know, Pro Circuit Axle Honda, everything came through. I came through the, the little at, mishap there, following for a while, and, and uh, charged there at the last and made a move, and the peak prevailed. prevailed. It certainly did. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. All of the challenge, this is round four, and we're underway. Out of the middle of the pack. Uh, boy, it's catch-up time. I see a pair of Kawasaki's running second. Enough time. Can they do it on this racetrack? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, they're going to have to go for it. They got a bad start and got shut off in the first corner. It's going to be tough. They're under jump. They have a tendency to bog a little, and, and it's just really critical. Both the one situation. There goes McGrath to the outside. Lampson on the inside. Let's see who comes out of this one. He's going to have to go high. And now he switches lines, and Lampson holds on temporarily. Here comes McGrath. And McGrath eats out the number three spot. Lamp has established his superiority. Now what he needs to do is to catch, and he does. What a move. He is really on the gas. But Graff makes that pass, looks back over his shoulder. Jeff Emig, number 18, out front. Here comes McGrath on the inside this time. McGrath is now going high. Let's see what happens. It's with, oh, McGrath clips the hay bale. He clipped the hay bales, bounced into Emig, and clipped Emig, and he emerges with the lead. Both riders could have been down. Remarkable composure and riding skill on the part of these youngsters. But it was a mistake. <laughs> and as a team owner, <laughs> the owner of that particular motorcycle, you're sure it was a mistake. Absolutely. He'll cut underneath and watch him flip the hay bale right there. Boom. And it just gets him out of balance. They hit. <laughs> Sorry, guy. <laughs> Here's another look. Now watch what happens after the hit. McGrath looks over at an image like, hey, look at that. Supercross 91, the ultimate challenge. As you can see, the 125 riders are lined up at the starting gate. Under. Here we go. Gate is down, and the 125 main is underway from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. But I think Jimmy Button, meanwhile, has taken the lead in this one. He's followed closely by Jeff Emig, number 18. Tell you how we used to do it in the real old days. That's when we only had a couple of inches of suspension instead of that uh, modern bike that you rode where you had six. Back to race action. We're in San Diego, California, Jack Murphy Stadium. A great 125 main event. Emig uh, for Steve Lampson. And uh, I, I guess on the other side of that, we're going to have to say that there's a lot of time for uh, our leader, Michael Craig, to make some kind of mistake. He's the guy that all the pressure is on right now. What do you think? Do you think Emick feels the pressure right now, Larry? Oh, he has to be, but he's handled it beautifully. Look at this. 
McGrath is all over the track. Now he's got a good inside line, and McGrath is going to make the pass. Eight out front. An unbelievable ride. There goes Lampson, and Lampson moves into the number one position. Here goes McGrath. McGrath is following him. McGrath takes over second. I don't think that, that uh, Michael Craig do what hit him. Marty, that's going to be a mistake. Uh, yeah. He's going to leave the door open. Yeah, Larry, Lampson needs to ride his own race and put McGrath out of his mind. But the way McGrath is charging, that's There he tough. goes. Look at that. History kissing goodbye. Jeremy McGrath goes to the inside of beautiful motocross or supercross move and takes over the number one spot. He never came close to Lampson's motorcycle. And uh, for some riders like yourself, uh, for Jeremy, you have a feeling, a sense about what you're doing. Here comes McGrath up over the top of the finish line. Jumpy dude. Thanks, Larry. Jeremy, you didn't get a good start, and you took your time battling for the lead. Was that part of your strategy? No, it wasn't. That's for sure. You know, I, I've been having troubles with my starts the last couple of weeks now. You know, I've just got to go home and work on them again, you know? Starts are the main thing in the race, and haven't been getting them. Is this your third event win this season? Yeah, it is. Great. We're really proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Larry. Here we go. Gate has dropped. This one is underway. Who is it going to be? Antonez, rider number 20. I can see the Kawasaki of Callan Bolden right behind him. Jeff Emig aboard that Yamaha. And Steve Wise has passed several with a minor league caliber of riding. These guys are hot all the way through. And now we've got moves being made through the pack by this. Coming up behind him, number 125. And there he is, coming into your picture, Jeremy McGrath. McGrath has been the perennial winner in this 125 class since the outset 13 events ago. A couple of laps ago, a couple of riders that were between Emig and McGrath conveniently crashed themselves out of contention, and that left McGrath with a clear track. He didn't have to worry about passing anyone, and McGrath continues to close. Now let's take that about uh, six, seven bike links, and wow, did he get the gap there. He was able to drive right up on top of that tabletop, if you will. He will try to drive right into McGrath to bust that block. He'll do whatever it takes to stay out front. They're both aggressive. They're both talented. We'll have to see which one of them is going to come out on top. Steve, would you make a pick at this point? The pro circuit beat any free Honda race team. See, when you uh, said he's looking at his lights, and there he goes to the inside. He's trying to make a move. Jeremy McGrath to the inside of Emig, but look at Emig grab a handful, and Emig takes the line away. That's the kind of aggressive riding I was talking about. But you've got to make your path stick, and you've got to make him solid. And McGrath wasn't able to do that, but he's trying and he's trying. McGrath goes to the inside that time. Now, he had an opportunity to take Emig all the way up to the wall and try a block pass, tabletop jump again. Let's see what happens this time. And he jumped it, and Steve right there, he had him set up for the pass. He jumped to that tabletop jump. What a move. Went to the inside of Emig. Emig was wide open. Had no idea that McGrath was going to do that. And uh, he was just history. Now Emig comes right. Emig has to jump right back and take the same advantage that uh, McGrath had. So what Emig needs to do is he needs to watch, him, he needs to watch it, uh, McGrath take that jump and he has to rise all year long. He is really putting together a fine race effort. Larry, once you get passed and you're in second place and you can stay with first place, that's a very good feeling because you know that you have a chance to possibly win the race. Now, the Boland and Tyson has been down a couple of times tonight. And here we go, checkered flag, and McGrath wins it. Uh, behind him, Jeff Emig, an outstanding race effort on the part of that young man. Thanks, Larry. I have a very happy young man here. You are still the point leader, and you know, I noticed you were jumping a part of that track that nobody else was jumping tonight. Well, that was up on the step up. I went through that in practice, and only Brian, my teammate, was doing it, and it worked well for me in the main. I was gaining seconds on him again. Everything worked out through that, you know. I couldn't have done it without Honda, Pro Circuit, and Teak, and Scott Goggles, Bill Hummus, everybody. Set to go. Any favorites? I would say Jeremy McGrath would be my favorite. Good pick, and Jeremy McGrath on the inside. Antonez, and uh, Antonez will have just about absolutely nowhere to go. Jimmy Button in number 48, running in the number three position. Big, tall rider sitting back and watching the lines being taken by Antonez and McGrath. Every track, he was waiting, I think, to see where, and look, there goes a pass on the inside. McGrath just cut the wheels out from under Antonez, and he makes the pass. Can he hold it? Yes, indeed. A couple of slower riders on the racetrack. He's aboard that Pete Danny Freeze white Honda. Now, most Hondas are red, but the, he'll make a couple of jumps here headed toward the checkered flag, and McGrath puts another one in the book.
Mets crowd goes crazy. Charge to turn number one on the inside and taking the lead is number one in the series. The regional champion from 1991, trying to repeat in 92, Jeremy McGrath of California storms into the early lead. Antifreeze, Pro Circuit, Honda, and then now their teammates, both riding for that uh, peak antifreeze uh, uh, team. I don't think it was a demotion, uh, Dave, that put... Uh, taking the good lines, and you've got to take them all in it, even if it's not so good. Now, Jeremy McGrath is an expert at that, and I'll tell you what else Jeremy McGrath is doing, Dave. He is experimenting with lines while he is out in front. He'll try an alternate just in case. With these, of course, the Eastern guys are all going to say, sure, it's easy for him to win when we're not there. But for now, the only story is Jeremy McGrath. McGrath, he takes the check flag with a lot of stuff. A lot of style. That was... Jeremy McGrath, you told us earlier tonight you're going to ride to win. Nobody can dispute that. Well, you know, I had a little bit bad luck last week. I was out here to prove a point, you know. Those guys in the East, they really think that they can stop on me since last race. But uh, I think I got something coming for them. Uh, next race where you match up with the East Coast, they, they've got something coming. They got something big coming. Good luck, Jeremy. Thanks, Bob. The handlebar plants his face into that berm instead of the wheels. Gets right back up, though. Never even lost the position. McGrath, meanwhile, maintaining his dominance out front. Supercross another day. <laughs> and fortunately <laughs> so. Meanwhile, the leader out front, Jeremy McGrath, is gone. The would-be vision. Everyone would like to be the Jeremy McGrath. This kid has really set the Western Regional Championship Series on fire. He is uh, number one, defending champ. Hottest thing going on a 125 right now. Drop of the gate of the question here. Not can anyone beat Damon Bradshaw, but can anybody beat number one? Eastern region and Western region when you combine the two, and there are two regions in the country, McGrath was beaten for everybody in Supercross. The pressure to maintain that number one plate if you happen to be the champion. For Jimmy Gaddis, the pressure to get up there and prove that he can run. Cycle and took off, and they disqualified fight in front sportsman like Conda. Let's throw in quickly that uh, Clowers was okay. Checkered flag for the man who now makes it three in a row. Damon Bradshaw of the future, perhaps. Jeremy McGrath is the, the first turn. Number one is the man to beat. Jeremy McGrath is the Western Regional Champion. He is the current Western Regional Point Leader looking for his second straight title. And he appears to be an easy winner in this one. Meanwhile, up front, I'd love to tell you it was a great race. Indeed, it was just a showcase for this guy, Jeremy McGrath, en route to an easy victory. I think, Dave, the only 125 rider in the country that can touch McGrath right now would be Brian Swink, the guy that won the Eastern Contest. And unfortunately, we're not going to see the two of them matched up. <laughs> no, indeed, McGrath will take his fifth checkered flag in the Western region this year. Swink has already wrapped up the Eastern Region Championship. We all anticipated a meeting in the $10,000 to win shootout in the Coliseum. There's the checkered flag. Swink says he's going to pass up the 125 race out there and ride the 250 instead. 125 championship main event. There's the launch and the charge to turn one. Lance, that is the series leader, Jeremy McGrath, who has totally dominated the Western region antics this year. And he quickly moves into second spot and prepares to challenge Hughes comes up the inside here, but Ryan says, I think the outside line's going to be the best. A Coliseum among the Western regional riders. McGrath had won six of them. That uh, one that he lost was a combination east-west uh, in Houston, Texas. Brian Swink winning that one. But since that point, McGrath has been unbeatable, and I suspect before this one is over, as a matter of fact, since learning from your mistakes. <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, he, what he had to do, first of all, was, was put himself in position to move Hughes to the inside. Hughes knew where he wanted to go, but when he tried to get there, McGrath was already there. His front wheel would take the top two spots thanks to Antonez's superb ride. I mean, not that you needed that win, but it was another nice one to put in the record books. Yeah, I decided to go ahead and race 125 as the last race, even though I had the, you know, the points championship. Uh, I was thinking about riding 250s, but, you know, I didn't get enough time to practice on it. But, you know, I'm just sure glad I could win coming out of my last race. You know, I, I won the championship. And, you know, deciding to ride 125 is a little bit scary, you know, just in case I didn't win my last race. But, you know, I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm glad I finished out the series with a win. I think that's the uh, thing you should have done, ride that 125 class, show everybody in L.A. who's the champ, and uh, next year go to the 250. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that, you know, everyone made this possible for me. You know, I'd like to thank Honda, Pro Circuit, you know, Peak Antifreeze, Axel, Scott Goggles, Bell Helmets, you know, couldn't have done it. My mechanics, Skip Northbrook. We'll and especially my parents. You know, I couldn't have done it without all them. Well, good luck in the 250s next year. All right, thanks, Bob. Bob. This season, it's going to be he and Bradshaw, and he'll do the same thing. 
The gate is down. The charge is on. The Anaheim Supercross is underway. Into fourth. Jeff Stanton. Aggressive as hell. <laughs> I had no sooner get through it. Put the moves and the hurts on the rest of the field. Love that variety of signs on the first lap. There's not a whole lot you can convey except attack, go to the front, get busy, do your homework. The question, I think, right now, same one we raised at the top of the show. Which of these guys has the stuff? Morocco in desperate search of that first good start of the year was dead last through the first turn. He's playing catch up again. So too is Jeremy McGrath. He's narrowed that margin down on the senior member of the team, Jeff Stan. Whoa! Shoots to the inside. McGrath makes the pass and makes it look easy. That's a very good question and one that uh, we'll really not know the answer to until the checkered flag is uh, thrown. My guess, based on past experiences, that uh, he's going to fade toward the latter part of the race. And I have to think that's what Stanton is considering we're back at Anaheim where Jeremy McGrath, the 250 class rookie, is answering the early race questions about his abilities to sustain the speed. Skip Norfolk, his mechanic, I think since his victory. <laughs> Bob Hanna, Donnie Hansen, Kent Howerton, Galen Mosier, Johnny O'Mara, they all picked Anaheim Stadium in which to win their first ever Supercross main event. <laughs> McGrath, wave into the crowd, obviously comes from good stock here following a tradition of new stars born in Anaheim. He is about to take the checkered flag. He passed Jeff Stanton and simply ran away from him. We can't, Grant has simply had the opportunity to learn how to run up front. Look, he's, <laughs> he's confident now. I'm going to style for you folks in Anaheim as he takes the flag in front of 55,000. Stanton comes up and does a little clicker of his own. He's content with second spot. But McGrath is the man of the moment. A flashback. This is Skip Norfolk as Jeremy McGrath is <laughs> crossing the finish line. Skip is the mechanic. Who's happier, Skip or Jeremy? And you. Well, <laughs> that was me, and here's you. Jeremy McGrath is on his way to victory lane for the first time. Well, you know, like I said before, I was getting some arm pump, and this week, you know, maybe it was a little bit more relaxed. Uh, shoot, I felt better than I ever have this whole season. You know, the bikes are great. Team Honda's giving me the backing. You know, I just couldn't have done it without them and my family and my mechanics skipping on. <laughs> マクグラス、60秒内外で走っています。そういった意味ではその心の動揺が出ないタイプがマクグラスと言えそうですね。そうですね。本当自分の世界を作るのが上手いんでしょうね。はい。独走でのファイナルラップ、例によってお客さんの
Bob Hanna did it. Rick Johnson did it. Jeremy McGrath just did it to the field. What kind of start Cooper will get? Field is set. Here we go. It's McGrath. Jeremy McGrath has a whole shot again. Played pretty well. He's up in about six, seven spot as they work lap one. Great start for number 12, Jeff Matasevich. Jeff Stanton is fourth. Cooper is fifth. We should see a tremendous battle here. Cooper in his own backyard. The fans are up front now. Craig, look, Joe, Michael had a chance there to do a block pass number on him. In fact, he's looking back over his shoulder. I, I think, think he's, he's looking for Jeff there. I, yeah, I don't know what he was pointing at. He's unhappy with someone. Jeremy McGrath wins the call that conversation. <laughs> it's been a surprise to a lot of people, but it becomes less surprising with each passing week as this week he can rebound. Now that's going to be the interesting point to me. Is Jeremy backpedaling now as he tries to maintain his slot, Dave? I don't. To the front, and Damon Bradshaw went straight to the back. Bradshaw was last. That question was answered. Is Jeremy McGrath backpedaling while he holds position? Nope, he's gone to the front and he's looking for another win. Last night he was a question mark. Tonight he is an exclamation point. Jeremy McGrath demonstrating clearly that he is. So that's very good news from the hospital. All right, we're happy to hear that for McGrath. What a story. A rookie comes into the 250 class to do as rookies do, pay his dues, learn the ropes from the big stars, figure out how to deal with the intensity of the competition and all the rest of that. And he blitzes him. He runs away from We've him. seen a couple of times tonight. And, um, and maybe by dropping him back that far, they'll have a crack. Well, if they're going to do that, they got to beat him to the first turn. Let's see if somebody can pull that off. And in that tricky first corner, Steve Lampson goes out front. Here's Jeremy alongside number 23, who's had some great starts tonight. That is Denny Stevenson up into third. Pontiac, he's going to sit out this race. Report was, Jeff says, I'm ready to go race. But the doctor said, well, we'd like you to set out one more. Meanwhile, Steve Lampson putting his Honda out front. Fifth and sixth. Lawrence is the uh, young man from the West Coast who is in the Western Regional 125cc championship. And here comes McGrath. He says, let me buy. And I don't know, was that a sachet out of the way on the uh, part of Lampson, or was he just kind of pushed that way because of momentum? Either way, he is out of the way, and McGrath is in uh, clear control of this one. Well, yeah, maybe so, Larry, but here's the guy who's collected most of the Nuggets in 93. Seven victories thus far. McGrath looking for number eight here this evening, and he doesn't have to look very hard. If he keeps that motorcycle upright, he will cruise to an easy win. Perhaps here we'll get a sense of the interval. Yeah, sure enough. Official, Larry, but it's going to make it close to official. Kodrowski's one of the few guys left with a mathematical shot at Jeremy. Yeah, he'll be the only guy left. Pontiac pretty much took care of that. Uh, Damon Bradshaw and Stanton suffering. Uh, oh, there McGrath takes the Remember is... McGrath has to lose to Kudrowski tonight in order to not win the championship. And who's it going to be Check out front? Out. Goodbye. Hello, championship. How are you today? Tommy McGrath. McGrath. Pressure. Talk about pressure performance. He needed a whole shot. He got a whole shot. And just as he has done all the 1993 Camel Supercross Championship, the $100,000 check awaits. And the young king is saluting his court. Didn't I tell you we go back to Orlando, Florida, the seashore? Nobody, and I mean nobody, and I include in that list Jeremy McGrath, <laughs> thought that he could do what he has done here tonight. <laughs> How about me? The nickname Showtime that seems to fit. Right. And the family celebration is on. There's Papa McGrath. There's Mom, the sister. His mechanic, Skip Norfolk's girlfriend, Ed from Skip. Can you believe it? Oh, God, this is great. Oh, man. He just never let up the whole season long. And he's, things are going great right now. God, it's unbelievable. Oh, beat them. Beat them. oh man. <laughs> we can certainly see the emotion, even if Skip doesn't have much to say. The salute from his fans. Appropriate, I think, that he came home to win it here in Southern California. Boy, you know, Dave, McGrath has been unemotional, pretty much unemotional throughout the entire season, but I think it's finally catching up with him now. He can't do anything except smile. He's not been able to get that off his face. There's a kiss for Mom since the hell. He just won the too busy Supercross Championship. How do you feel? Woo! Happier than hell, that's for sure. You said earlier in the year that you didn't want to be the kind of rider to sit around second, third, fourth, and win the championship. You wanted to win them in style, and you wanted to win a lot of them. You've done that. Well, Bob, you know, I try to win as many races as possible, and, you know, tonight was my night. I got a good start. I didn't get a good start in the heat race, and I uh, made up for it in the main event, and I sure didn't want some guys to catch me, that's for sure. 
Well, I like to be the, uh, I, I'm about run out of questions, but I like to say I've never seen a uh, smoother, more confident, or more uh, deserving champion. Thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks. Well, Jeremy, you've changed the sport of Supercross. On behalf of the thousands of fans that you have around the country, that which you've worked so hard for, the number one place. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, Roy. You know, I'd just like to thank AMA and Camel. Uh, just for giving me the chance to do this. You know, Honda's backed me all the way, and I just appreciate it, you know, a whole heck of a lot. And I uh, hope I can do it again next year. You know, I had a great season. I couldn't ask for anything more, but there's still two more races, and I want to win those, too. So i just like to thank everyone out there who made this possible, and uh, appreciate it. Hail to the champ, Larry Myers. Just... 50, l'homme à battre s'appelle toujours Jeremy McGrath, pour l'instant invaincu à Bercy. La première manche commence bien pour lui, puisque dès le premier virage, il est encore une fois en tête, juste devant son coéquipier, Jeff Stanton, Belval numéro 35, et Guédard numéro 15. Pendant ce temps, Jeremy McGrath continue sa balade, en saluant le public et en assurant le spectacle à chacun de ses sauts. Stanton est un peu plus loin derrière, en seconde position, mais pour l'instant, sans avoir pu inquiéter McGrath. Deuxième super finale de Bercy, et devinez qui vit en tête, évidemment, c'est McGrath. Mais derrière lui, Bollet a pris un excellent départ, tout comme Hughes et Stanton. Pichon, lui, s'est un peu raté, McGrath, pour un duel que tout le monde attend. Il ne reste alors plus qu'un tour à parcourir avant l'arrivée et Stanton croit bien tenir là la revanche qu'il espère tant. Lui qui, tout au long de la saison de Supercross américain, s'est régulièrement fait battre par McGrath. Une grosse seconde seulement sépare les deux pilotes et les 15 000 spectateurs de Bercy en viennent même à encourager Stanton. Stanton qui met la pression sur McGrath, guettant la moindre faute, la moindre défaillance de son adversaire pour espérer passer. Mais McGrath ne craque pas. Cette année, le maître du Supercross, c'est bien lui, Jeremy McGrath, qui à 22 ans seulement réalise un parcours parfait. La preuve, à Bercy, pour l'instant, il a remporté toutes les courses auxquelles il a participé. Et ça, c'est du jamais vu. Who cares if he was a rookie or not? He won the championship in his first year. It's a good start. And it's Larry Ward, number 11. He does it again in the main event. He's got McGrath behind him. Henry is third. But Larry Ward taking the corner. And here's the challenge from Jeremy McGrath. Oh, you see him look <laughs> over at the, uh, What are you doing up here, Ward? Larry Ward had the lead. McGrath times. Ward number 11. And that's number eight. Henry, Henry makes the inside move on Ward. McGrath now is third. What a battle. Stanton just being in a good position. And it's McGrath taking the inside on Henry on the whoops. In Orlando, Florida, as we see Doug Henry and Stanton currently second and third to Jeremy McGrath. Welcome back to Orlando. Even though Mike Morocco, while we were away, picked up two seconds a lap. I don't think it's enough. It doesn't look like it's enough here on the final lap to catch Jeremy McGrath. Fourth riders, Morocco taking three months away from home, only a week off for Christmas to train before the season started. Certainly had the endurance factor. He came back. He's established himself as the champion. He takes the checkers. Jeremy McGrath, season opener, numero uno. Staying true to your plate. I have no questions. You just tell me your thoughts. Well, Jerry, you know, I was going, going into the race, I was pretty dang nervous, you know, I, I have to admit, I'm, I think it's just going to get easier from here on out, and, uh, you know, it's a tough track, it was really rutted, and Morocco was on the gas for sure, uh, but I did just what I wanted to do, I got a good start, I kind of screwed up there in the middle, like third lap or so, but I got it together and started riding and uh, pulled it off. Uh, or somewhere up near the lead. No, he won't. No, he's back in the pack. It's Emig with the whole shot. They're with him. Number 10, yellow bike, Brian Swink. Then it's Lampson. Henry right there. We'll lead, but Craig in second place. Here's Kudrowski. McGrath looking for a pass on Kudrowski. Unbelievable to see Jeremy this far behind. It brings back memories of uh, old Charlotte, I guess, a year ago when he proved he could come through the traffic scene, look over his shoulder at Kudrowski, who can't buy a start. Starting out of the gate about 10th. And he catches Henry right here. 
gets by his teammate in a hurry. I'm looking for LaRocco, who was one bike behind McGrath on the first lap. The 125 race in San Jose, which was probably his greatest comeback. He ran right into Brian Swink. He knocked Locks Swink him off. Out. He hit him. He knocked him off of this thing. I think he thought Swink was going to go a little wide. He tripled in underneath him. There was no way he could stop, and he just punted Brian Swink. Swink's not going to forget that if he ever runs with McGrath once again. He might be looking over his shoulder to see if Jeremy's flying by. Look at the pass on Jeff Stanton. McGrath went by Stanton like a bull rear. He has passed about half the field. Lampson on the inside. McGrath edging out in front, and he gets the line he wants. Gave his teammate a little more room than he gave Brian Swink, didn't he? <laughs> Jeremy setting Michael Craig up right now. The crowd's going wild. He looks back at Michael Craig. Makes it look so easy. Craig had the inside and couldn't hold on to the spot. I mean, Michael Craig had that corner covered. Fifty main. Looking at Emig, cuts to the inside on Jeff Emig. Emig, though, not willing to give up that spot. Yeah. This kind of racing will let McGrath get into a good position as well. Amick, clean pass. He knew that uh, the Ward was wounded and he could take advantage of him. Gave him a lot of room. Amick now the leader. McGrath won't wait long. He's gone. He's around Ward already. Amick is fast enough to stay out in front, but will he go without mistakes? Amick, the former 125 champion in the outdoors, known for his outdoor performance, tried to focus earlier this year on Supercross. Here's McGrath. He bumped him. He chopped in front of him with a block pass, hit Emick's front wheel. That will add to the enmity between these two, I'm sure. But McGrath has gone from 13th to 1st. Crash in the heat race. Jeremy McGrath, a comfortable lead when it comes to Mike LaRocco. LaRocco was unable to do tonight what he thinks he has to do to beat Jeremy. His belief is that the only way charge through traffic Last week at Orlando, Jeremy's 11th career win tied him with the 1980 champ Mike Bell. If he wins tonight, he's tied with David Bailey, the 83 champion, at 12 victories. About this time last week, we were holding our breath as LaRocco made his charge on McGrath. Not the situation here today. He's close, but I just find it hard to believe that he's going to get around. That's going to take a last lap miracle. McGrath is going to finally win his first Houston Supercross. Man, his teammate, number eight, Doug Henry, in the process. Henry was as high as fifth, but he's suffered from lack of practice time as well as we see the checker flag come out. Win number two in two events for Jeremy McGrath. In my opinion, Art, the best career performance ever for Jeremy McGrath. Yeah, from last to first in that San Jose 125 race was terrific, but that's 125s. This is a different class of people. When you can go from 15th to first against these guys, you are the undisputed champion of the Supercross world. Can't be too disappointed with second. You've been made short work of everybody out there, but you just were one step behind Jeremy. What do you have to do to beat him? Well, I think the best thing to do is to get out in front of him, which, uh, again, tonight I didn't do, but I definitely have the speed to do it, and, uh, you know, I caught Jeremy towards the end of that race. I just, uh, I was just kind of hanging in there trying to find him, uh, you know, a place where I could pass him, but, uh, you know, he wasn't making any mistakes, so I made it tough. All right, Jeremy, you didn't have your work cut out for you, no hole shot this time. You were a little bit far back, but you made short work of that and got up front. How was it in the early going? Yeah, it was pretty tough. You know, I was in there with my teammates, and I threw a couple block passes that, you know, I didn't think they were too bad. Bad, but you know I kind of got off balance on the start and didn't get such a great start so you know unfortunately I had to come from behind but that just lets everyone know that I can do it once you got out front did you feel confident well I felt confident for a while then I seen uh, Mike coming on strong so then I had to pick up the pace again and uh, you know I think that's the toughest race I've ever had to race and uh, the last six laps were pretty tough Jeremy says it's tough you know we've had a great race, Dave. Tell you what, Art, this is a disaster for all Jeremy's challengers who've been able to kid themselves. If he ever gets a bad start, we can beat him. And Jeff Emig gets out of the gate pretty well on the inside. Larry Ward gets the whole shot, but look at Mike LaRocco once again, a long way behind. Third week in a row, it's number 11 out front. How about the no lean Yamaha? But you're right, LaRocco's got to play catch up again. We've said it before, that's always fireworks time when one and six get together. Ward with two hole shots in three races. Emmy got the other one, and they're up front. Emmy, Ward, McGrath, and Stanton 
but the top three starting to pull away from Stanton already. Hemming didn't waste any time getting a roll shot two weeks running. He's in danger of going to third, and Jeremy's got him. Hemming holding the edge as they go for the jump. Jeff was never really in the first race of the year in Orlando, where he started out 11th and finished 7th. Back to Anaheim, California. 250 Supercross main event action. Jeff Emming in front of Jeremy McGrath. Number 11 is Larry Ward in third with Jeff Staffan in fourth. Jeff Emming. Emig, one of only two riders other than Jeremy to lead laps this year. Ooh, looky there. McGrath did a triple jump to the inside, took the line away from Emig. Jeremy knows that he just makes Emmick crazy. These two guys don't like each other, and McGrath uses it on Emmick. Emmick fighting back, taking the inside now as they go wheel to wheel. Wow, what a comeback. Emmick not having any of it. Says, I don't like this guy. I want to be in front of him, and he put a great retaliatory pass on Jeremy McGrath. Has anyone? Absolutely correct, Dave, as they come off the whoops. Let's check this move, and Emig able to take the line away from Jeremy. And yeah, Brake checked him a little bit. I tell you, before this year is out, I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be trouble between these two guys. <laughs> Some very strong comments about this guy in print, and you know Emig can read. Stanton taking Ward, or very close to it anyway, in third, as Emig holding on to the lead. Jeez, that's Doug Henry. He's riding fifth. Jeff Matasevich right behind him as Jeremy McGrath couldn't quite get the buster out of the corner. He's keeping the pressure on Emig. He wants to force the mistake and get to the lead. And right here is where he passed him last time. Emig takes a short jump. Jeremy takes the triple, looks up at him as if to say, what are you doing up there? Sherman now, much more aggressive. He's not going to catch him again. This thing is over unless maybe Stanton into the hay bales, and that'll be a disappointment for him. And meanwhile, sailing through the air with ease, taking two triples over those small <laughs> little uh, jumps, is victory at the start of the season. This win tying him with Rick Johnson's record of 14 wins in consecutive seasons, but Davey gets closer to that mark. And they're on. Matasevich with a good start. Number 21, Kyle Lewis on the outside. McGrath behind him. Number one's got a lot of catching up to do. This should be interesting. It's Matasevich, then Craig, Emig, Ward, Larocco, and then Jeremy McGrath. There's laps of number four. Seven, Larocco with a banging of the bike with uh, number one, Jeremy McGrath. Those are the two hot dogs of the series thus far, and they're hooked up in a battle early, but it is the battle. 1994. If he doesn't, he's history. Doing well would be winning this race. Jeremy McGrath is dialed in on his teammate Lamson, and he passes him on the jump. Lamson came up short. He saw Case in a little bit. The bike almost stopped, and McGrath just shot by. Great call. A first lap crash in Houston, but he went from last to 10th in eight laps and finished up ninth in that race. You know, who we haven't seen is uh, my pick to be series champion this year, Jeff Stanton. Kasevich doing well here. After Craig passed him, I thought he'd do the fast fade. He held off McGrath for a long time, but there goes Jeremy. Move. Get glimpses of number three, Mike Kadrowski, periodically. He is fifth, and in the middle of what's shaping up is a pretty good three-man battle. Look out. LaRocco moving into third place right here as he's following LaRocco and LaRocco runs it in the corner Matasevich also gets tangled up a bad break for Jack here Dave yeah he uh, was first to admit last year that a lot of his crashes were caused by the fact that he got tired now Michael Craig is uh, getting up early in the morning going out and running he's got Brian Wallace beating on him constantly the interesting question is how much Jeremy has left. You know, it's conceivable that he might be riding that puppy just as hard as he can ride it, and his little tongue might be hanging out because he's been sick. Jeremy setting the single-season record of 10 wins last year. Still felt he had something to prove coming into this season. I don't know. I think a lot of people this year are still... Still, you know, I've heard a lot of doubt already still, but, you know, it doesn't bother me. The more doubt there is, the better I ride. Right now, it's wheel-to-wheel -wheel with Michael Craig trying to sneak in. Craig gets it inside the corner. In a lap or two. Kodrowski is back in third, not that far away, should something happen to the front runners, And you never know with those two going at it. Craig got way out of shape on that whoop-de-doo, got her side. 
Rocco takes the inside, comes down. His elbow hit the back of Emick. Emick did. Oh, Emick oh, give him a little karate kick. To me, this looks like Jeremy coming in there trying to set up a pass. There you got it. Didn't look that hard either, did it, Dave? I wonder if he didn't sit back there and watch Craig's lines for 10 laps and then find a place where, he, where it looked easy to him. There is no doubt in my just that Kudrowski's so pumped up that uh, he's going to try to pull off a miracle here. Jeremy looking for his fourth consecutive win, his 14th in a season and about a quarter. Kudrowski pulling up a little closer right now. Reminds me of Orlando when LaRocco ran McGrath down. LaRocco was... Uh, Clipping two seconds a lap off Jeremy's pace in that race, but uh, tonight Jeremy's ill. That makes a big difference. In a rut, things can change rapidly. Well, he's got her down to three or four bike. Oh, Kadrowski tipped it over. Kadrowski goes down. Can he hold on a second now? Get back on the bike quick enough. I think he can. Craig was far enough behind as taking the checkers. Jeremy McGrath, he honored to be mentioned in the same breath as Ricky Johnson. Huh. Well, one more win, and he's tied Johnson's mark for consecutive victories at the start Senor of the... Senor McGrath, perché vincere sempre? Well, I guess uh, it's just the uh, practicing during the week and uh, the good bike from Honda. You are a little sick. Was that affecting you at all? Oh, yeah. I mean, I felt it in the heat race and in the main event. I was really tired, and, and uh, hopefully I'll get rid of it this week. I mean, I rode a strong race from, for what I had. I mean, track was really one line, and, uh, you know, I just did my best. Okay, that was four wins in a row. Next week, you're going for the record. Does that bear on your mind at all, or what? No, right now, I just want to get rid of my cold. All ready to go now for the 250 main event. You asked for it, you got it. Look at Jeff Matasevich, number 21 on the inside. He'll get the whole shot. Emig is also there right there. McGrath, sad news for the rest of the field right there. In good position, Matasevich in front of Jeremy McGrath. Uh, Jeremy's going after him. You saw him shove it up on the inside of Matasevich right there. A little contact, but they're staying very close to Matasevich. Oh, he hit hard, almost cased it. Jeremy McGrath takes advantage of it and blasts his way through. The move with Emig and Matasevich still in front of him. Craig dispatched. Oh, Ooh. nice inside pass by Jeremy McGrath. Jumps here. He's never won one of these things. If Jeremy wins tonight, it'll be his 16th career victory. Jeff Emig has never won one. He's been Skip, we know Jeremy's in great shape. It looks like he's sitting there just sizing up Emig. You think that's what he's doing? Yeah, I think. Well, he, well, he tried to make a move right there. Oh, yeah, we just got it. So, uh, he sat back. Uh, I mean, that hoop is pretty tough, but you try to push it, you may go down. Uh, we're out front now. Let's uh, see if we can extend this lead a little bit. going to do the top bat. He says it's easy. I'm going to try to win 11. He's going to be halfway there at the halfway point of the season. Very He's really impressive. on track, isn't he, as he takes around the final lap. Motorcycle around a Supercross track. And Dave, while a lot of them are flying through the air, Jeremy McGrath taking the checkers flag, not even celebrating. He's pooped. Uh, Jeff Emmy coming across second. But while victims, there's 15 guys there that can run into you. LaRocco on the inside, but Kehoe gets a great start. McGrath coming from the outside. Oh, oh McGrath gets it. through. He got position on the gate. Kehoe leads it. He won't last long. Watch Jeremy zap him on the inside. Real quick. And it's Henry in second place now moving in front of Kehoe as Jeremy McGrath has pulled off the impossibility almost. You know, did he do it? From way on the outside, the field charges. He goes late to the brakes and runs way up in there. Nobody on the inside had any trouble. They all the different ways he had found to win. Well, he found a way tonight that nobody has ever found before. This is the first time in history anybody's come through the last chance qualifier to win the feature. Oh, what determination and fine riding on a very difficult course. You can see those ruts look like canyons right now as Jeremy McGrath coasting to the checkered flag. All right, Jeremy, while you're out there in the lead, I asked Skip, I said he quote unquote said he was a little PO'd and he was gonna win the main. Well, you know, I had some unfortunate luck tonight and you know, I was destined to win that main. I've had enough bad luck. The last race I got seventh and I think it's BS, you know, I'm out there to win and put on a show for these guys and you know, I admit I'm having fun, but there's times that I get mad and uh, when I get mad, that's all there is to it. I told you, you got all that stuff out of your system, all that bad luck in the first two. Yeah, you know, I mean, I couldn't have had a worse spot on the gate, so I was, my mind was totally on neutral, and, uh, you know, I was concentrating on that start. And that's what I did, and I went out there and uh, put the best six laps in, first six laps, and 
Got a little lead there and then just uh, stick it to him. Morning, a nice crowd. As we get set now, the gate dropping. Jeremy McGrath, Jeff Matasevich, stand out in front of Ward, Kodrowski on the outside. Loracco in the middle. Ooh, he's he goes the down and then handed it over to Matasevich and Craig. Now Jeremy from Matasevich. Craig winning back in Tampa when Jeremy had his problems. But McGrath, number one, is coming on. He has moved up to put the pressure on Doug Henry. And there, look at that. He cleared the tabletop. He jumped right over the jump. Didn't uh, bother to stop at the top of it and passed Henry in the process. He's looking for a way around. Let's go to the sky camp. He's going to come down on the inside. Look him get the front wheel down. That enables him to turn inside and make the block pass on Matasevich. I love that camera. It shows you things you don't see from the ground. 19, Michael Craig. Let's see what the strategy... Oh, he slips on that step up. Whoop, that gives some room for Jeremy and gives him the edge, gives him the better line, and Jeremy McGrath is now our new leader. 14 laps, Michael Craig led in this race, and Jeremy McGrath takes it away. See, that time he doesn't bother to uh, try to clear that double jump. He's on cruise control. Jeremy McGrath headed toward his eighth win. The nail down a third, unless a mistake is made. The knack-knack on the triple. As he's with their first opportunity to watch Jeremy do business in their... Uh, As we're getting ready for the green flag. And the gate drops. It's Emig Stanton, a good break from the gate. They're in the middle, Ward on the outside. McGrath behind Emig, he's praying he doesn't go down. And over the hay bales is Michael Jost. Here's it up, rejoins the fray. McGrath third, number five, Stanton fourth, as Emig and Craig right out in front. Emig got the whole shot, but Craig tried for him on the corner. Shoulder surgery after Charlotte had been out for the rest of the year. Passed on the surgery, and has done a great job since. Certainly likes this harder packed soil now as McGrath goes for Emig and slips inside him. The start is in ninth. Out in front, Michael Craig getting the challenge for number one, Jeremy McGrath. Cuts inside and McGrath now in the lead. I think Jeremy figured that out the lap before when he went. A lot of slack. We've got the scene set for a tremendous finish of this race. I'm very impressed that Kodrowski has caught Jeremy McGrath, the fastest man in Supercross, and maybe the fastest man in Supercross history. Jeremy's been a little tentative, perhaps, a little tight. He just doesn't seem to have quite the perfect rhythm. Kodrowski's got a shot at him, although it is a long shot. That is a measure of Jeremy's greatness. See how the foot peg, uh, foot kind of dragged off the foot peg there? His rhythm is off. Kodrowski's yeah. got him. Yes. Here comes number three, Mike Kodrowski into the lead now. It'll be interesting to see what Jeremy tries to do in coming back. This is not an easy track to come back on. We talked about lost strategy earlier when the championship was on the line. Consider Jeremy's situation here. Do you try to go back and attack him and win this race, or do you just sit on the point lead? Man, it's a call. Good of nature. Here's the finish line jump area. White flag, and uh, Jeremy bumps into Mike Kowalski, sends him wide, regains the lead here on the final lap. Let's see what Kowalski can do as they come up on the lappers. For all the runaways that we've seen this year with Jeremy McGrath, we come down to Dallas in a terrific two-man battle in traffic on the last lap workout. Jeremy McGrath in front of Mike Kowalski. Well, we've got the whoops to go yet as they both pass Henry, number eight. Let's hope the lappers stay out of the way and see him getting the blue flag. It's one and three. Those are the two guys you want to worry about. Look at LaRocco. He's caught him. Kudrowski, though, he gets the line he wants. Kudrowski. He moves in with a slight lead off the wall. So no, Jeremy goes mm. flying in toward the mechanics area. Kudrowski had to go into the hay bales. LaRocco has passed the two of them. It will be a Mike LaRocco victory. Incredible finish. Unbelievable. But Graham went after him. There is LaRocco taking the checkered flag. Jeremy took a huge chance on the last lap of the season. Another look at this unbelievable move. Kodrowski had the fast line. Jeremy tried to use him as a berm. High side and hooked his knee. Well, here's the reaction we were waiting for. It's all smiles oh. as they shake hands. Jerry Mercer or anything, you said you were going to be there. And man, I don't know what the heck was going on, but you tell me. Yeah, you know, I, I got up in the second behind Jeremy, and, and you know, I was, he was riding pretty smooth and pretty fast, and I was just trying to keep insisting. You know, at the end of the race, I knew I'd be stronger. And, and uh, he made a mistake, didn't jump the triple, and I got by, but maybe I was riding a little too cautious, or he was riding more aggressive, and he got me back, and then 
through the whoops, I said, I'm either going for it or falling down, you know? And went through it, and I had him, and he just went inside of me and caught my front wheel and just looped his bike out, so, you know, I almost had the win. That was a spectacular crash. It happened right in front of all the mechanics, and then it was like, everybody was like <gasps> holding their breath because you were up on top yeah. of the jump, and Jeremy was down. I think I could have pulled off the win if I wouldn't have hit the hay bales, but I hit him and got tied up in those. Well, you said you were going to be there. Good job, I guess. Thank you. Psycho, motorcycle racing. Team Kawasaki. Okay, Jeremy, a little air of disappointment on your face. You were out there roosting, and then super duper thrills and chills wipe out. What happened out there? Yeah, Mike got a little close to me, and, and you know, I got to say, it was pretty hot out there, so I was probably winded a little bit, but, uh, you know, he was a good friend for me. I apologize for running into him, but, you know, that's what you got to do to win, and, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll do it back to me someday. Was that a climactic finish right there? You guys totally wiped out in front of everybody in the mechanics, and then it was like, who can scramble to their feet the fastest? Well, I think he passed me in the whoops, and then I kind of, at the end, I felt that I had a little more drive than him, and, and that's why I went inside, and, uh, you know, he wasn't letting off, and I wasn't going to let off. I wasn't going to give it to him, so I made him earn it. Still got 50 points in the lead. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in a comfortable lead. It was kind of probably a stupid chance to take, but, you know, I want to win every race I can, and, you know, do it for Honda. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot. the 250 finale for the 1994 season. Defending champion Jeremy McGrath with the number one plate from last year has already secured the 250 title for this year. And it is Jeremy. Look out. This track is his kind of track. Privateer Yamaha's 21, Matasevich. Then the factory man, Craig Dabble no for Kudrowski as we go up to, uh, to Jeremy McGrath and watch the leader's style around here. Let's hear from Jerry Bernardo with Skip Norfolk. Did you just say plus 14 on Mike LaRocco? Yeah, right now things are going good. He's got really good lines out there. You know, he's been wanting to do this all year long, and uh, it's really good that he's finally got a chance to go out there and, and dominate like he did last year. Uh, right now he's pumped. Things are going good. And it's been a difficult year, a tough year mentally, but uh, this is letting it go. He's having fun right now. And no one has done what Jeremy McGrath uh, probably will do here with this huge lead, unless he gets another flat tire. Not true. Uh, and that is place at least in the top ten in every race for two years and win two championships at the same time. That's every Supercross race he's ever run in the, in the 250 class. He's never been out of the top ten. What a guy. Checkered flag for Jeremy McGrath. We're looking up to the king, Jeremy McGrath. Going out with a bang, round 15. 15 seconds on second place, Mike LaRocco. Well, you know, I haven't, this is the longest winning streak that I haven't won, and uh, I definitely wanted to prove a point. Hold on, I'm getting lightheaded. I want to sit down. Okay. That's cool. That makes for good TV. I'll fill in while you're taking a little break. I'll say, you told me you wanted to win. I knew you wanted to win. There's a lot of stuff on the line, like prestige, but let's talk about that $7,000 for the Coors Light Super Challenge. Yeah, definitely. Coors Light. Gave me a great present this time. That's for sure. Um, you know, actually, I earned it, but, but uh, I don't, I don't, I think that might be another record. I don't think anyone's ever won all the scores like money, and I just did. Yeah. What are you going to do with all that cake? I don't know. Something. <laughs> First, I'll put it in the bank, then I'll probably spend it. We are in Vegas. You're not going to do anything stupid tonight after the race, are you? No, I already brought my allotment for money, and uh, I'm doing all right, so. I'm sure going to gamble, I know that. <laughs> the kickoff of the Kenworthy Motocross Park Outdoor National. The gate is down, the charge is on. Here they come to the first turn. Dowd's got a great start and as they make the turn. Here's Jeremy, no surprise there. Well, he just ducked under on the first corner there. I think uh, Dowd drifted a little wide and already you can see evidence of it's a supercross style track and right now jeremy looks really relaxed and in control right now jeremy mcgrath is definitely on cruise control well he's built up a nice lead and he can afford to just kind of cruise in like you said and uh he's enjoying this this is his first 250 moto national win and now we'll be focusing on moto number two because the elusive target the overall congratulations it must be a a tremendous feeling to win your first outdoor national moto. Yeah, it's a tremendous tiring feeling. I mean, you know, this stuff is really hard, and I'm really stoked on my first national win. Uh, no breaks for me. I got the whole shot led from start to finish, and, you know, hopefully that's just the beginning of what's going to what's gonna come in the future here. I'm, next year I plan on giving it 100% the whole year under this plan, and, uh, you know, I want to see what Get I can do. Get out of here and make this thing just you know, take the least amount of time as possible. If he can just go out in the second moto and enjoy himself, it'll be a lot better. 
And to turn one big wide sweeping turn and jumping out front is McGrath we've seen all year. But up front it is a two man battle and McGrath really looks sharp here. Jam needs to have in the first few corners. Well, Jeremy's got them all behind him early on here. Take a look at the early running order there. Jeremy McGrath takes the checkered flag. Jeremy McGrath on the right. Getting set. He's used to getting whole shots here. Wants to see if he can win his third in a row in Orlando, but it's Emmy out in front. Emmy takes the turn. He goes down. Look out. Henry. McGrath right on the heels of Kyle Lewis. Leaps over Kyle Lewis into first place. You talk about wasting little time getting out in front now, and he's going to... You are looking after Jeremy McGrath, and he is right where you want him right now. Are you worried about Morocco? Well, he's got enough jab now he can watch him. Uh, hopefully, if he uh, if he can see himself pull away, he's pulling away just a little bit right now. That's the best thing for the confidence. When he starts wheeling him in, if he starts reeling him in, that's when you start worrying about him catching him. But right now, he seems to be pulling away just a little bit, and we got a lot of racing left. And the cheers in Orlando are for number one, the knack-knack kid, Showtime, whatever you want to call him, Jeremy McGrath on his way to winning the opener to the 1995 season, his 20th Supercross win in only 32 races, David. That's the first too many things against it, but there you see him taking the win again. He's got to demoralize everyone. For the warmth and the action inside. The race for the hole shot. Jeremy McGrath is off to a great when he gets his first hole shot of the year. Plus, moving ahead of Ward as we look at Skip Norfolk. Jeremy McGrath's mechanic checking out on the stopwatch as number one is really putting on a sprint now. Jeremy McGrath has won 20 Supercrosses. He's looking forward to number 21 in the shortest period of time in Supercross history. Only 31 races. He's on his showtime lap right now. 28. The knack-knack for the fans. You know, more impressively than all the records is the way he's riding the seasons flag. and two races. Taking the checkered flag. Beating him. Last minute instructions and nervous routine. Oh, yeah. You see McGrath there clapping, doing whatever it's going to take to get him psyched. See, he's going to get pushed wide. The 250 main is underway. Breaking to the inside. It is Larry Ward getting the whole shot with Ezra Lusk, number 24, out there. And buried in the back of the pack, Larocco and Kudrowski. And McGrath, he's buried back there right with him. McGrath, you see him right there taking the turn. He's about in ninth place right now. He this year, be. second in points. Here comes Jeremy McGrath approaching John Dowd. And John Dowd almost looks like he just gets out of the way. You know, Jeremy's so intimidating, and now he's got flashing lights to go right along with it. He's carving his way right through the pack, no problem. Go to the front, so do we. Oh, the crowd is going crazy. He's trying to make his move. What can you tell your guy to keep his momentum up? Uh, just need to tell him to follow Jeremy and learn, uh, just like everybody else needs to do, it seems, so far this year. And he's got a bruised sternum, and that's got to be painful. And right there, McGrath goes right for the jugular, wastes no time, and he's already got second, setting his sights on Larry Ward. And look at how low he jumped compared to Lampson. He does everything a little bit different. Right. Well, he doesn't carry a wheelie into the face of those jumps like some of these other guys. Right there, look on that triple. You see him look over to see where Larry Ward is. He doesn't want to win. Larry Ward, and look at the interval now. About a second is all with Jeremy McGrath on the hunt. There he hops the little rut section now, takes the inside, forces Ward out, and then leaps by him. Says hello, goodbye. And his 22nd win of his career. That's pretty amazing. Only a shot like last week. Put some distance on McGrath and hopefully hang on here. They're off. Good start by number 24 in the Suzuki. Ezra Lust competition out front as Jeremy McGrath, as usual, wasting no time, cuts inside of Ezra Lust and takes over the lead before the green flag is seen. The final turn, the finish line jump, the checkers for Jeremy McGate. Just about set to drop. There she goes. McGrath wasting little time goes to the inside. That's Lampson and swing to the outside. The inside, knowing those guys on the outside had the momentum, he took their line away. Look at Craig. Craig in second, and he passes Jeremy McGrath. First. There goes Jeremy with the challenge already. Oh, Zipping nice. through the whoops. Nice move. Jeremy McGrath to within three wins of Bob Hanna's mark of 27 career wins. And of course, he doesn't want the points race to tighten any further. 
This is a focus for Jeremy McGrath. And McGrath, a great start as we watch from the Honda Helmet Camp. McGrath for a whole shot. Skip Norfolk, uh, Jeremy McGrath's mechanic looking on, concerned as McGrath just spinning away. Look at the airtime McGrath gets to that section. This has got to be one of the most exciting moments in Ryan Hughes' career. He's won 125 races. This would be his first podium performance. Jeremy McGrath. Trudeau's, we get set for round nine of the U.S. Supercross Series. And a good takeoff by Jeremy McGrath. Number six, Jeff Emming. Then Kyle Lewis, Michael Craig. We've got Henry and then LaRocco. Pretty good bounce to be holding a little bit of a cushion over Jeremy. And uh, if he is unable to get away, you see right there to the left of your screen of holding off Jeremy McGrath. Usually around this time, Jeremy has already made his pass and is checked out. But right now, Emick's making a good race out of it. Jeremy looking a little bit more relaxed. Uh, offending champion, two consecutive years. Jeremy McGrath is looking for a third championship, and he's putting the heat on. Side by side, Emick gets the angle on the corner and boxes him out. Jeremy's got to be getting frustrated because he's got company from the Kawasaki camp coming up from behind, and he can't, I don't see any place on this racetrack where Jeremy's that much faster. 6,919 fans in the Astrodome are being treated to a tremendous competition right now, David. Emig, number six. Jeremy McGrath, number one. McGrath just looking at every turn, trying to get by Jeff Emig. And there he takes advantage of the opportunity. That was brilliant. 26. This guy knows what it's like to ride around last lap and put on a show for the fans. Only one win away from that 27 mark set by Bob Hanna, the second winningest rider in history. Got to be proud of Emig. Emig placing second, his best finish of the year. Riders, and I like where he's starting. Most of the good guys are on the inside. I think Jeremy's out too wide. We're riding with Jeremy. That's Emig on the left. He got the whole shot. McGrath looks over to Henry on his left side and cuts underneath Emig on the turn. Jeremy McGrath out in front. Looks back at uh, both Emig and Henry. Larry Ward is up in there. All the guys with good starts. This is an excellent race. And Jeremy on his way to possibly a record-breaking evening. Take that opportunity. <laughs> McGrath number one. Emig number six. And Henry. They do a little bump action there. We thought we might see some bar-banging action on this short track. So he'll mess him up. And by the time he moves over, then he moves over for Emig. And it makes things really tough for the leader. Pretty much in the uh, can right now, as they say in the movies, Jeremy McGrath has tied Rick Johnson's all-time career victory mark of 28 with the year who will be battling for position here tonight. This is a look from the top of Greg Albertine. Look at McGrath, scores the whole shot. Jeremy McGrath continues. Uh, you can see on the other side of your screen, Emmett going into the corner from the whoop section. He's already got probably a six or seven second lead. And uh, no mistakes from this kid, and he just, it's phenomenal. I, I mean, it's boring. Shoot, you know, it's hard for us up here to, to Good really... think we have a race in back of him. You see, he's got the helmet camera right there, but if we go to that, you're not going to see anything, but... The all-time win mark for Supercross. 28 to Rick Johnson, 27 Bob Adam, but number 29 for Jeremy McGrath. Here it looks pretty serious. I don't know if it's serious or <laughs> how am I going to get through this day with the flu? Yeah, a temperature of 102 most of the week. There you see LaRocco, who won the first moto, is off quickly. Look from Rich Taylor's helmet cam. We see Doug Henry, and now Jeremy McGrath trying the inside. He cuts off Henry. They will come up the elevator, and McGrath maintains the lead as they sweep around to the right side. What a great move there. All he has to do is hang on, and he will get the overall victory. Well, it's going to be his first 250 outdoor national win, first one of the season, and I think he's proved everyone that he has arrived, and he is a contender for the national title. Gate to drop on moto number two here at Bud's Creek. Let's see as they go up the hill who gets the whole shot. Looks like Emig's out in front right now. Fired back up on their way. Look at Jeff Emig as he leads Jeremy McGrath. But look at LaRocco coming up on the inside. He sweeps around McGrath. As Jeremy has gotten around him. And look, here comes the Suzuki. Is that Albertine getting into the side of LaRocco? Looking for that fork guard again. <laughs> Put that in your arsenal. Now Jeremy sweeps around Jeff Emig. McGrath taking over the lead, but just for a second as Emig comes back. But Jeremy up the double manages to pull out in front. And this is just the first lap. McGrath, the 
come up the hill, and he will swing to the outside, and Jeff Emig, what a great move as Jeremy went inside. Emig making the pass. Oh, it's a great move, and uh, people are always saying stuff like, boy, if he'd have had a couple more laps, well, we'll see what he can do from the uh, from a, a poor start. And Jeremy, I think when he got around uh, Emig, probably just figured that was that. And Emig retaliating and doing exactly what it takes to beat Jeremy McGrath and take him out of his rhythm, and we'll see if... I think you can maybe win this. You might say Emig is just about due for an overall victory at Gainesville, fourth, second at Hangtown, and fifth at Mount Morris. Well, I think he can maybe win this. Doesn't sound real confident to me. <laughs> and there goes Jeremy up the inside. Well, Jeremy McGrath making that look easy. Coming up the inside on the double. Gets on the easy is what they call him in baseball. I don't know what we can call him in uh, motocross where the fans have him and wave him around. They uh, seem to be a big favorite of the fans here at Bud's Creek, Maryland. Look at how far forward Jeremy rides on the motorcycle. Look at his head's almost over the handlebars. You can look at his front number plate almost, and that's that's that aggressive uh, riding style that's uh, worked so well for him in the Supercross, and now it's starting to pay off in the outdoors. Comes up the hill around the last turn. A little bit of a wheelie as he comes over. The checkered flag is out, and Jeremy McGrath comes away with his second overall victory of the set. The bikes firing up on that concrete launching pad. The gate drops. They'll go up the hill. Let's see who comes out in front. Look at that, Emig off to another quick start. Jeremy right behind him. And Tom. Right now, Jeremy McGrath making a move on Emig, relegates him to the third spot. Jeremy took the inside line. Emig went to the outside, and Jeremy scoots around. Man, what's going through Emig's head right now? Well, all these guys are. <laughs> McGrath is the leader. A good lead over LaRocco. And David, the word from the pits, broken shock for John Dowd. Finally, the checkered flag is out. Jeremy can celebrate the victory. Two rider battle to the end. There's the gate. It drops. Moto number one is underway. Looks like Jeremy McGrath gets the whole shot, followed by Emick. Those are the two riders we just highlighted. Coming in from the outside, Jeremy out in front. And I've said it a lot this season. Once he gets off to a good start, he is hard to catch. And he's already put a little bit of space between himself and LaRocca. Jeff Emig moving into that third spot. Of course, he's thinking points right now. And Jeremy McGrath is at the point. You don't get many more points than that. In fact, that's the limit he could collect. Checkered flag is out. Here comes Jeremy McGrath to the line. I think it was a green bike. Yes, LaRocca is second. And Jeff Emig finishes third. Photo 2, it was McGrath and Emig again with Lewis in third, on way to his first 95 podium, a third overall. And a three-lap duel between number six and number three was defined early. Emig goes flying. Bruised and battered, Emig somehow clears his head, ignores the pain to get back into a fight for second with Lewis. McGrath, the opportunist, pulls a 20-second lead on his rival. The checkered flag gaining his fifth overall win of the season, his eighth moto victory. Uh, Honda was working really good in second moto, and, uh, you know, there's uh, no reason I shouldn't have won that race. Moto 1 saw John Dowd, Mike Kudrowski, Phil Lawrence, Larry Ward, and James Dobb out early with Jeremy. While wow. Jeremy McGrath was taking the lead quickly and running away to a four and a half second advantage in the opening lap. First five laps, McGrath was pulling a double digit lead. McGrath, the checkers, and the 1995 title. Outdoor Nationals takes a lot of, lot of time testing and the bikes, they got to be prepared every week over and over again. And, and uh, you know, it's just a complete team that takes a whole effort. I finally put my mind to it, and I think it just helped everyone else work so much harder. The second 250 moto was like a walkout fight in boxing. McGrath already securing the 250 title, lamps in the 125s in exciting fashion, and Jeremy gets the whole shot. Emig looking for redemption, battling for pride's sake. He went outside. Jeremy goes inside. Where to be seen by the rest of the field. A 15-second lead by the halfway mark. The only question to be said. McGrath, Emig, Dowd, Ward, and Kudrowski, the top five in the year's final moto. McGrath's 11th win in 24 motos. Here's how the McGrath era in AMA National Motocross has begun. Tiny 290 is the longest you've ever seen. Which was, where was the longest uh, whoop section that you ever ran in your, in your day, David? And let's see who wins the whole shot run right now. There's a red bike nosing out in front. Can Jeremy McGrath hold on to it? It's going wide. It looked like Lampson to me. It's Mike Brown, number nine. 
And Jeremy McGrath, number one. Kevin Windham is in third. And then Mike Craig, number 17. McGrath doesn't waste any time. Mike Brown coming into the sand, coming to the outside. Jeremy McGrath having a battle with the Honda Troy Rider, Mike Brown. Everybody making it through the sand okay as Brown takes the lead. And here comes number 28 on the run, Damon Bradshaw. Bradshaw, Bradshaw with a great start. Yeah, he Mike. goes wherever he wants. And earlier he, earlier he said because of the track design, uh, perhaps because it's easier, he's going for the pass. Michael Craig is in third place. So two Honda of Troy bikes right up near the front. Yeah, he said because it was easier. Right in back of Craig. Here's Jeremy McGrath over the finish line in the number one spot, followed closely by Mike Brown. Good run for Damon Bradshaw so far, holding down at number four spot. Still staying in contact with the leaders, but the three front runners are all on Hondas. I don't know if that says anything about the way... Champion, Jeremy McGrath. And the battle is between Bradshaw and Huffman. With Phil Lawrence in second place, right in front of Bradshaw. Bradshaw's got a shot at Phil Lawrence in this last corner if Lawrence leaves the door open. Checkers fly. When they introduced him over the PA was Brian, or Damon Bradshaw. There you see Skip Norfolk, the mechanic of Jeremy McGrath. We push everyone wide. We're from five to 10 seconds from the gate dropping. The engines are revving. We're just about set for the 250 and they're on. Lampson got the best jump I've ever seen. Almost looked like he jumped the gate. It is a Team Honda. Lampson and McGrath with Ryan Hughes moving into second place, number five. For Bradshaw, number 28. Michael Craig, number 17. Number 16 is Greg Albertine. As they head for the first triple, it's Jeremy McGrath following his teammate, Steve Lampson. They did this in Charlotte until the last lap. But, but out in front, you see it there. Steve Lampson, who went through so much frustration in the opening round, has trouble on the dragon back. And Jeremy McGrath, but Lampson fires back into the action. A side-by-side -side race. Team Honda out front. Jeremy gets the edge, holds the inside line. Jeremy McGrath has a big lead right now with Greg Albertine in second, but a battle is for third with Mike Craig. Associate Jeremy said it himself, that sand is so soft, he really was surprised. There's a replay of what happened to Lamps, and he's going for the inside, the front wheel tucked on him. And he actually ended up taking the turn into the dragon back. Our Honda stopwatch as we look for intervals and, of course, the lap time. That battle for second place is still tight. Craig will not give up. Rocco jumps over Craig into third place. Oh, my goodness, just when Craig was putting a charge on, here comes Jeremy McGrath. He takes the checkered flag. After a third place in the opening round. Michael Craig, number 17. A little pile of dirt under their rear tire, so they actually are kind of sitting on a on a ramp. So the back end is higher, and they can squirt off of there and try not to get the. These here in Anaheim, the biggest crowd of the season, 65,000 plus. Watch the race for the whole shot. Jeremy McGrath on the inside. What play with this? The third race of the season. Steve Lampson having a battle with Albertine for second place. Riders who have uh, had crashing problems. Emmy, Bradshaw, and then Albertine. Well, the way it looks right now as we watch Jeremy just making it look easy again for the third time in a row. He's got a pretty good lead over his teammate Lampson. It hasn't really grown or shrunk. It's stayed about the same, and I have a feeling that... Back to the leader, Jeremy McGrath. All-time winning a Supercross rider as we take a look at the top five. McGrath working his way through that rhythm section. He had actually a faster line through there in practice in the heat race, but I think the track's getting chewed up through there, and it's, why risk it? It's fast enough to do it that way. He can monitor, uh, look over his shoulder, get those signals from Skip Norfolk and find out how far uh, back his teammate is and uh, game plan. He's starting to make time on Lampson. I don't know if that, that uh, injury from crashing in practice on Lampson is starting to wear on him or not, but definitely forces you to do the same. Jeremy McGrath, that is mechanic Skip Norfolk. Jeremy looking down. And we're all set to go for the 250 minute event. It is Greg Albertine. Number 16 on the Suzuki with McGrath to the end. Jeremy McGrath in 10th position right now. Oh, he's got a long ways to go. He still hasn't even come by our screen there. He just went by. Ezra Lusk. Lampson. 
McGrath is right behind Damon Huffman, who also got off to a bad start. This is a great opportunity because Ezra Lusk, then Greg Albertine, then Lampson, I don't think that, that Larry Ward is that intimidated by these guys. He's already starting to put this track, and he's got five or six guys all taking those best lines. Look at that. Three guys right in front of him. He's got nowhere left to go, but he makes the move around the outside of swing. Okay, Larry Ward, number six, number 30. Damn, we got a problem down here. The number four is Steve Lampson. And look at Jeremy McGrath, number one. He got the whole shot, but faded with a crash. But he took a third in Anaheim. And his confidence is back up there as he runs in second position. And you know what? McGrath, who was behind Damon Huffman in the beginning, carved through the pack. And Damon Huffman is hitched to ride just out of McGrath makes. So if McGrath goes to the lead, Huffman's going to be there, too. Here comes Jeremy. Leaping right by Ezra Lusk. And he's already starting to cut into that lead. Look how close he is behind Larry Ward. Larry Ward's been there before, and he cracked. But McGrath almost... Moving to third. Jeremy McGrath now right on the bumper of Larry Ward. Only a matter of time, wouldn't you say, David Bailey? Well, at the, at the rate he's caught him, I would say so. Here he comes up the inside. The fans here at the Kingdom wanting to capture the situation themselves pictorially. The flash bulbs are popping all over. Ward did a brilliant move right there not to let Jeremy cut back underneath him. He's got the inside. Jeremy McGrath is now our leader. And look at Damon Huffman also trying to sneak in to take second place. Well, both those so guys are Jeremy to McGrath, jump over. Damon Huffman, and he went out of the riders. Here comes Damon Huffman on Jeremy McGrath. This is going to be the first race in 250 this year. Huffman putting the pressure on McGrath. That's something we haven't seen in years. Can McGrath withstand that kind of pressure? David Bailey, you've been saying all year long that Damon Huffman is the one rider that possibly could challenge Jeremy McGrath while he's getting his shot right now. We're seeing it right now. Look at Huffman through the whoop section. He's got a beautiful line putting the pressure on McGrath and McGrath bobbles. Damon Huffman. Huffman right on his heels. They're already right. starting to, they're pulling away now a little bit from Larry Ward, but no matter how you slice it, a beautiful performance by Larry Ward. So it's McGrath, Huffman, Ward, Lampson, and Lusk. The battle is right up front, right where it should be. For the first time this season, Jeremy McGrath, beyond the second lap of the race, has a challenge. Well, I think it's going to really get interesting when they catch up to the lap riders. Huffman has the speed all through the race. He's had the speed. At one point, he was a little further behind Jeremy, but now with a faster line to the whoops. Here comes Stephen Huffman out of the whoops to the outside. But Jeremy McGrath had a good angle. Huffman. Oh, my goodness, bar to bar. The crowd is going bananas. Little bobble there by Huffman, but he lets, he's letting Jeremy McGrath know he's got the speed to go up and run with him. And now Larry Ward. Oh, I but think definitely, and you can't blame him. But right now, Huffman goes by McGrath for the lead. And McGrath jumps right back out. We go to the whoops. They hippity hop through the first parts of the loops, and then the speed factor going into the corner. But Huffman with that outside line can double over the jump. McGrath knew it. He looked to his side. Huffman. Breaking into the corner now. Has the angle to take over the lead. This is the first rider, other than Jeremy McGrath, at this point in the race to lead a 250 main event this year. This could be the story, too. It looks like McGrath maybe shaking up a little bit. He can't believe it. It's happened a lot sooner than he thought. Huffman is able to use those long legs to get through that whoop section fast. Going into the triple. Bar to bar. McGrath retakes the lead. They're not far from the Lampers now, maybe four seconds away from Kyle Lewis. They're coming into that whoop section again, and watch Huffman right back by on the oh. long legs. I, I bet you these guys are getting tired, Art. They're starting to roll over that double. They're starting to cover each other's moves. They got a huge lead over third place Lampson. McGrath was given the inside, and he took it. Plays any factor in this. Okay, into the Big Dipper. It's Jeremy McGrath. But Huffman is not letting him off the hook. Kyle Lewis gets out of the way wisely. Oh, oh Huffman stole oh. it. He stole his bike. 
That gives McGrath a huge lead now. I was about to say, Art, that if Huffman can just stay there and apply that pressure, not far to go now before he takes that checkered flag. Jeremy McGrath, his fourth consecutive victory. Luskin Point. Our unofficial count has Pashone in fifth. Emig, Hughes, Ward, and Craig. That's our unofficial count as they come across. Again, I'm down here with Jeremy McGrath. Jeremy, were you surprised when Huffman came up like that? Well, I was definitely surprised. I didn't think someone would be on my tail so much like that. I was coming through the pack. I had some good lines over here in the corner. And I think Damon saw a lot of my lines, and he just stayed right on my tail. And then when I got in front, kind of relaxed a little. And he made me nervous a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> you know, he's coming up. He's, he's good. I just, I just think I was a little bit maybe nervous after I got in front. I don't know. Does it remind you of Jeremy McGrath in 1993 coming off a couple 125 titles? Yeah, Damon's, he's definitely, uh, you know, the one that's going to be the champ if I'm not. I, I, he's, riding, he's riding really good, and, and uh, he reminds me a lot of myself. Stoke, was that your best 250 ride yet or what? Oh, yeah, by far. You know, this one, uh, you know, even top Anaheim, man. You know, I finally got to race with him. You know, he's always up in the front, and I'm always coming from behind, but... Today we got we both got bad starts and I just rode with them and rode smart and it was pretty cool. It's gone halfway. They're revving it high. They're off and McGrath with a great start. Larry Ward to the outside, number six. Number nine is Mike Brown. Guys, you can already see right there behind him in that corner. All three of those guys blocked each other out. Already opened up a huge lead for Jeremy McGrath. He's got about three seconds now. So we might as well just go back to the battle for second place because that's where the fight is. Doing all the jumps out of the turn as he whips through the whoop section right now with a substantial lead. Always made me nervous. No one's <laughs> making Jeremy nervous. He has nothing to worry about out front. Look at him. He's jumping all the way into that step section and all the way out. The only guy that can do it. He learned from Ebbing in the, Ebbing in the heat race. Huffman went down. Pleasure Jeremy McGrath here. is out in front, number one, with a big lead. Emig in second, Craig in third. Hughes has now moved into fourth with Brown and Lusk in that order. Well, if you look at Jeremy, he's running a real smooth line. He's taking his time. He's watching what everybody else is doing. He's pacing himself off of that. Someone gets a little closer, he picks it up. If somebody falls back, he turns the throttle down a little bit. So right now, he's in control. Let's go to Davey. I'm down here with Skip Norfolk. Skip, how important was it to Jeremy to reestablish his dominance tonight? Well, it's real important. You know, I, we were changing some things. Uh, we were a little slow in practice, trying to make up for it. Made, ended up making him uncomfortable. I mean, this guy's amazing. We go back to what he knows, what he's comfortable with, and he's ripping off laps like this. It's, you know, my hat's off to him. The guy's incredible. We had his head all screwed up earlier, and he put it back on and was out there hammering on him. Back to our leader, Jeremy McGrath, as we follow him on the last lap. Over the triple, only a few feet to go as he takes a look at the checkers for his fifth consecutive victory. He won in Orlando. Making the main event as a privateer in both the 125 and 250. There are the eyes. Clear that he has the maturity to put up with somebody like Emig cutting him off everywhere. Okay, it's sideways and they're off. Jeremy McGrath not getting the good start. It's Jeff Emig number two and another Kawasaki of Ryan Hughes number five. Watching for third though. And it's a one, two, three, four event through the sand. McGrath cutting to the inside on Ryan Hughes. Moves into third, but Ryan jumps him now. Here's the triple. They all take the triple. In practice, Jeremy McGrath moving by Michael Craig into third as they go into the whoop section. Jeremy having a little bit more trouble than the Kawasaki's out front. Well, I think the only rider on the racetrack that's got the speed of McGrath has got to be Hughes. If he can get around his teammate, that'd be a big plus. Behind LaRocco. We're looking out front right now. Emmy Jeremy McGrath taking second place with a battle. Ryan Hughes will not give up easily, however. You know what, though? This is the first time this year, Art, that I, that I can think of where these two riders have been side by side in the first lap. Hughes has a great opportunity right here to do what Huffman did in Seattle. Watch everything McGrath does, follow his every move, and keep the pressure on. Oh, this is going to be a great three-way battle, we hope, as Emig now. And that straight away gets some speed. McGrath through the triple. Jeremy to the inside. Oh, my God. What a battle as Hughes comes back on him. It's out in front, Jeff Emig. Jeremy McGrath having a lot of fight in him. Well, he's going to have to tonight. Number five, Jeff Emig is in first. McGrath second. Hughes third. Craig fourth. Lampson fifth. LaRocco sixth. Huffman seventh. And Lusk is in eighth position. Dyson it for a second there that, that we saw Emig in the, uh, the heat race. 
Here they go into the triple. Jeremy McGrath gets cut off at the hay bale by Emma. Go for yeah, he carries the front wheel over one bump more than everybody else. He lets the back tire skip, and he hops one more. That's a faster rhythm through there, and it also takes less energy. He's able to do the same every lap. Emma cutting him off once again, but look out for the triple. Let's check it out. This is going to be close. Jeremy McGrath to the cheer of the fans, to the inside, takes over his first lead of the race. But Emmy coming right back. Jeremy shut him down. Well, that's the same place that he kept passing Hughes. And uh, finally, he just pushed Emmy wide. Brian Hughes, Kawasaki teammates. You see them behind the number one red bike, the Honda of Jeremy McGrath. It is Lampson right behind the million bucks right now. Just focus. He's in the horseshoe turn. He sees the checkers in sight. Finish line jump. Jeremy McGrath goes to the of the sport. We'll be right back with words from Jeremy McGrath. To Damon Bradshaw and once again, Skip Norfolk with words of wisdom, words to fire him up. Whatever he thinks he needs at the time, he'll be screaming into Jeremy's ear right before the start of the... Can Jeremy take eight in a row after breaking the record at seven? Oh, what a pack. Ezra Lusk breaking out in front. Number 34. Cutting to the inside, though, is Jeff Emig, number two. It'll be Emig with the lead. Jeremy McGrath in third. And the race is on. Now early battle going on with number two out in front of number one. Oh, I can't believe how slick McGrath was. He went into the first corner, buried in the pack, snuck around the inside, passed everybody in the whoops, and already we're looking at a replay of last year. Jeremy McGrath taking a quick lead as he goes up the stair steps and goes into that other triple on the far side. Really come on strong. And Damon Huffman is right behind him as they go across to finish the first lap of action. This is a 20-lap main event. They did that first lap in about a minute. Jeremy McGrath to the inside. Can he box him out? McGrath taking it back again. Here comes Emig. Oh, my goodness. Emig to the inside. Gets him in the box. Oh, oh boy. Emig is asking for it. Over the quad. Oh, they both hit hard on that quad. He almost went off onto the cement. Now he's hit third. This Watch is just, This is just how it was in Atlanta. I was starting to say, Art. Oh, the crowd is on their feet. They can't sit down. Emig making the turn on the straightaway now with Jeremy McGrath in second. Yeah, 20 laps. You know, it looks like Hughes is in good position, too, uh, David. Well, he's, he's making up time, He's Mark. sucking up right underneath there to Jeremy McGrath. And if anything should happen to either of the front runners, he is right there. Yeah, and so is Damon Huffman. All these guys are really close. Lust broke so good in that heat race. He's got the speed. He's not holding anybody up. And Lust is the inside. Jeremy McGrath on the outside. Hughes will help his cause. That's a teammate move. Jeff wow. Emig getting a little breathing space in first place now with a great box out by Ryan Hughes. Now Ryan did a beautiful move right there. And I don't think he did it totally intentional, but he almost took Jeremy down. Jeremy did a good job. His legs aren't long enough to reach the ground. That you can certain about what's going on out here. Oh, yeah, you know, we've been out front. Ezra Lusk has taken it over. Mm -hmm. Took them both out. Damon Huffman is in third. Ezra Lusk battling with Jeremy McGrath. McGrath going to the inside. He will take the lead away from Ezra Lusk. But right there is Damon Huffman. He collides with Ezra, taking over second place. Got a great opportunity right here, Art. Yeah, it's only a matter of time now as Jeremy McGrath pulls away. Can Damon Huffman, though, pick up and match that battle he did in Seattle? Absolutely. Wait till you see when they come to that long whoop section. Damon Huffman is going through that. It looks like a gear higher. If he Hold on. With 13 laps remaining to win his eighth straight Supercross. He's got Damon Huffman behind him a couple of seconds. Behind Damon Huffman, another Kawasaki and Ryan Hughes, who is two seconds in back of Huffman. Well, you know what happened as we uh, broke away? Damon Huffman made a big mistake going through the whoop de doo section. He had a lot of momentum. Jeremy McGrath. And Damon Huffman now comes and we're ready to go. Six on the outside is Ezra Lusk. Ezra Lusk, Yogi with the lead out of turn one. It's then Larry Ward, Ezra Lusk, Jeff Emig, Phil Lawrence, Buddy with Damon Huffman. Michael Craig, more bad luck, stalls out in the far turn as Jeremy McGrath hits the monster triple with Larry Ward right behind him. And the guys that we would expect to get up there and challenge Jeremy, the guys that have been putting the pressure on this year, Emig and Hughes. Emig is in fourth, and Hughes about second.
seventh or eighth right now. We'll have the probably. He's already been opening it up at about a half a second a lap. You can bet that's going to be even bigger. McGrath into that dangerous corner. Second lead now. About a second a lap he's gaining on Larry Ward. It stayed the same there for a while. But I think right now Larry Ward's a little bit more concerned with Lust than he is with McGrath. McGrath making it look easy as we take a look at the Honda stopwatch to check out the interval. As we come out of these whoops, we'll check it for you. Larry Ward at 7-3. McGrath jumping completely over that tabletop jump, still in the final lap. Jeremy McGrath would become the first rider and has become the first rider. It looked like Emig in fifth, then Lawrence in sixth, with Huffman coming up to seven. Good start. And McGrath is uh, maybe fourth or fifth, or maybe even further back in the pack. There he is right there, filling with his goggles, getting those last right next to him. Five to ten seconds, and we'll be underway here from the RCA Dome. Who gets the break? On the inside is Doug Henry, number 15. Jeremy McGrath tries to cut inside. Doug Henry is our leader, with him again second. Lusk in third, Jimmy Button in fourth. Well, Doug Henry is gone. He's got a huge lead. They're right in front of him. Bradshaw, Hughes, Emick, all those guys are ahead of him. And Doug Henry, who's been riding so good lately, look at him jump that finish line jump. He's got a clear track. Make it tough. Button is not letting him get away. Here's Emick making the rush for the lead. Jeff Emick takes over the lead from Doug Henry. Here comes Ezra Lusk on the inside. Well, Ed used to battle was one of the toughest guys in the world to pass. Kind of developed sort of a bad name. These riders slow up Jeremy, but look at Jeremy Murat on the inside of Damon Bradshaw. He boxes him out with a great move. That's he the only way to pass out here. This track is fairly simple in a design, and the only way to get around is to get physical like that, and McGrath pulled it off. A little bit about him. That'll slow uh, McGrath's pace down, but look at him. He's already around Henry, too. Pull and tear up. Everything's working perfect for this guy. He carves through the pack like no one I've ever seen. The racetrack, but he's got a couple of spots here and there where he makes mistakes, just like right there. What a move by Jeremy McGrath, just waiting for the right time. That one second lap earlier. Oh, this is going to be a great finish. We anticipate another one from Indianapolis as Jeremy McGrath has to battle from behind. We'll be back with the final action after these one goes. Bananas is down is Jeff Emig. Oh, my goodness. Emig looked like he got cross rutted David. Oh. Jeff Emig goes into that deep rut, as you said. Front wheel went over the berm as he came into there. He went over that little bit of a hump as they started the corner. His back in kind of hopped, went around to the inside a little bit because of the lapped riders. And as the track gets more beat up, uh, these riders start to make mistakes here and there. I like what Jeremy just did. He went over that berm purposely, went just to the outside of it. That way he could get, you know, eliminate any kind of problem like what Emig had a lap before. Lost all these guys. Emig was ahead of him. The Ryan crowd Hughes. is standing as Jeremy McGrath. Not taking any chances on that triple with a knack-knack. The Tucker's in sight. He has won 10 in a row, equaling his previous record of 10 victories on a season in 1993 and 10 more in 95. And he set 1993 and 95 a 10 wins win, his 11th of the season. He got pinched off. It's Emig number two with the best angle. Okay, the scene is set now for a tremendous race. How is Jeremy McGrath going to get by the three other fastest riders in recent races? He's got Lusk as his first target as they finish lap number one. Oh, what a pass. Nice move by Hughes to hold on to second place against Ezra Lusk. Here comes Jeremy McGrath. McGrath cuts off the Suzuki rider and moves into third as the crowd is really with him. Well, is that, in that battle with Lusk, Hughes... Uh, took the speed out of Lusk. He wasn't able to come into that triple. Cased it hard. McGrath not following. Put himself in the right place. He could have been following and he would have paid the price there. Okay, now just like a race we remember, here comes Jeremy McGrath. Cuts inside Ryan Hughes. He is quickly in the second place. This guy is so amazing and so sneaky. Hughes had no idea he was that close. As they go to the finish line jump, isn't quite ready to take him, but it could happen any time. What's going to oh, wait? Jeremy McGrath, a pass on the same corner that he passed Hughes. Here comes Emig right back. Emig gets caught up in the hay bale. He goes down, and Jeremy McGrath looks behind to see just what happened. McGrath is in first. A second place in Dallas and a third place in Houston and a fourth place as we go to the replay. Emig just tried to get back 
snuck in there and cut him off. The hay bale hooked up on his motorcycle, and as he tried to go, he had nowhere to put his foot. Went down. And Jeremy McGrath, meanwhile, heads to the finish line jump, ready to lap his first rider, Kyle Lewis, who is just in uh, quite a bit of pain. He's been bounced around a lot lately. McGrath, but can he do it for 20 laps? I have no idea. McGrath, two seconds ahead of Ryan Hughes. Let's go down to Marty. Guys, one of the things that's interesting on Jeremy's bike, I talked to Skip Norfolk right before the start. He said he taped up the air duct. We have a threat of rain. They were worried that it would be very costly if it got wet. Now, that would have a bit of an effect on horsepower, but uh, so far, you'd have a tough time convincing me it's hurting Jeremy McGrath. On to that lead, and no mistakes from this guy. Should Hughes hold on, it would also equal his best finish of the year, the second place in Dallas. Look at the smoothness on those wicked whoops. You know, when he does make a little mistake, he doesn't lose much time. Uh, you know, I say no mistakes. I mean no major mistakes. Nothing that's uh, like Emig. You know, he had a chance to get up there and run with Jeremy and try to make it all happen in the first couple of laps and went down. AMA to officially get those points to see how far down it takes for Jeremy uh, and the other riders to uh, wrap up this crime. The main gate. Main event gate, he has won. 17 races in a row without losing, counting motor career win. And a Superman over the finish line and jump. How fitting is that? Position. I believe he Now, what will be interesting yeah. to find out is where Emick finished. He might uh, still be hanging on to it by the skin of his teeth. Around the track. I used to like to do that, so I didn't have to sit on the starting line like McGrath is right here and get nervous for that long. I like to be the last guy there, so when I got there, they put the... Okay, they're revving now. Let's see who can get the whole shot. Jeremy McGrath got a very poor start for him. Ezra Lust, 34, is out in front. McGrath is buried at about 8. 15 to the inside, and it's Hughes, number 5. Well, this is ugly for Jeremy McGrath because Henry, who won his heat race, I was so impressed with, looks like he might go into the lead here. He got around Hughes. Hughes was fast in the heat race as well. Ezra Lust, number 34, since Daytona. Three fourth place finishes, but here comes Ryan Hughes making the pass where many passes by the good riders have been made. Rapp gets by Henry. He wants by Lawrence, and he has moved into third, believe it or not. He passed both those guys in the same corner, moves into third. Now he's behind this battle right here. That corner had a lot of momentum. He's lost just a little bit of time to McGrath. See McGrath right there? Oops. Hughes jumping it just about like Jeremy does. Yeah, he's going faster there. I think actually our, Jeremy's learning from Hughes through there. Jeremy McGrath gets cut off on the inside. Oh! Ryan Hughes buckled him. Just went in there and did that kind of on purpose, just kind of having fun with Hughes right now, and Hughes did a good job keeping his composure. Bar to bar, into the whoop section before the corkscrew. Jeremy backing down a little bit. Their feet watching this battle between Ryan Hughes, number five, and Jeremy McGrath. What an opportunity for Hughes to get out there and run with probably the best motocross rider and supercross rider ever. Before they go into the rocker. You know, I think there's a lot of respect between these two guys, and sometimes you see uh, McGrath and Emick in some of these battles, and you'll see Emick, you know, going all the way across the track and cutting him off, trying to protect his line, and I don't think you'll see that from Hughes. Hughes is a fighter, but he won't do anything uh, dirty like that, which we've seen occasionally from Emmett. You have to be better against him, and he said, Ryan Hughes has figured it out, but here goes Jeremy McGrath. Oh, what a move. One mistake from Hughes. He came out of the corner, couldn't get over that double. That's all it took. And uh, he, he really didn't even need to be here. We used to see Hannah do that. On the stopwatch as we check out the interval now. Yeah, see, there's a good 5-5. Five, five. He's beat. Here comes McGrath. Win number 12. Jeremy McGrath. Look at that. Be right back to hear from the champion as you see him waving to the crowd here in the Silver Dome. Congratulations by Jeff Emig. We'll be back hearing from Jeremy in a moment. Thank you, Jeremy. This is for you. Uh, the AMA has a 70 year history in racing. You're going to go down as one of the greats of all time. 12 in a row this year, four championships, and you're one of the greats. And we thank you for what you've done for our sport. Thanks, Tom. You know, I, I, sh I mean, I can't even believe it. You know, me and Skip here, we, we're living a dream. and. We got to be the luckiest people there are, and uh, thanks to AMA, you know, it's all been possible, and, uh, you know, without you guys, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Went out and kind of took it real easy and made sure he rode through that rut 
perfectly straight, so when he gets out over the gate, he can get a good start. I noticed with the 12 victories, he's got V12 on the back of his yeah. pants. Steve Lampson, an injured. Okay, and they start to rev up now. Can Jeremy get a good start in the muck that we saw Marty Reed in? He stays pretty straight. It's Jeremy McGrath out in front. Cuts off Mike Brown. Larry Ward is also there, number six. Mike Brown, number nine, though, as Jeremy looks back to Brown and just takes off like a rocket down the straightaway. Well, here we go again. You know, Jeremy, the guy has no flaws. He killed him in the qualifier. Got a great start here in the main event. So if he makes a mistake, which it's very rare that he does, that's when we're going to see the race. Everything that he's doing, he's very fluid. Not getting too excited if his wheel pops out of a rut or anything like that. He just flows with it, and, he, and he's concerned about the lap riders and everything on the track. Rick, Jeremy is so balanced. Uh, you know, there would be some people with tremendous confidence that Jeremy has step over that line well, and that, maybe, maybe accidentally ride a little bit over the edge. Well, when you start winning as much as he has, which no one's felt that except him, you know, I've had my streak, and David has had, had, had his streak as well. Sometimes you think you can do anything, but I think the key to Jeremy's success is not just his riding, it's the balance of his life. He likes to have fun, he likes to ride, he likes to train, but he, do he doesn't overdo it in any one area. Skip Norfolk is Mike. Tell him to look out for those big bumps for the whoop to do section. There's a few big ones in there, and if you can hop over those, you can keep that bike pretty flat. Hey, you got Honda Troy beside you? You got Team Yamaha down from them, and you know who's sitting on your right. Okay, you know where you got to be when the gate drops. Forget about the heat race. You need a whole shot, four laps of your race, and then you'll be out front. You can do whatever you want then. All right? Hammer on these guys. 20 laps this time. Oh, that's great. So we're set. They're revving up. The gate will drop any second. Now it's gone. Jeremy gets a terrible jump out of the gate. Emig, good job. Lusk, a good job. McGrath is about in 10th position right now, but he, then he shoots by four riders already in 5th position. And look how smart Jeremy is. Up the inside to the whoops, already around LaRocco. He's in, what, 4th maybe, 5th? I can't believe what this guy can do. He's got some fast guys ahead of him. LaRocco won his semi. He's already... Sharp elbow that time on Lusk. Yeah, he gave it. Really coming up from Kansas City. He wants to hold on to that lead. So now these guys are using pretty much the same line. You can see uh, Emig's mechanic, Jeremy, looking on. McGrath is able to start using different lines. He's got nothing to lose, really. He can just watch what these guys do and play off of them. Patient right here. Time is going to run out uh, if he can't stay close. He's got to stay really close to these guys or else they're not going to feel that presence anymore. Oh, LaRocco can sense his first victory of the 96 season. Now, this section coming up, LaRocco's been using the inside and off the corner. And he cuts in front of LaRocco. Jeremy McGraw brings the crowd to their feet. Holy mackerel. We're in St. Louis, aren't we? I can say that. Harry <laughs> Carey. <laughs> Look at LaRocco. He's got an excellent line coming off of that section. He gets Jeremy back briefly. Fire to bar. McGrath takes the advantage of the triple. LaRocco, he gets the block pass. Oh, what great infighting. Keep it upright. You can, I can tell you he's a little irritated with that. He's not going to let these guys boss him around much more. Fender defender. Here comes Jeremy again. This is the last lap where uh, LaRocco, watch what he does right here. He jumps all the way off. Laps remaining in this 250 main. Oh, look at the move. LaRocco and Emmy going at it now. Coming through the whoops. Great move by LaRocco to the inside. And then the double jump by Emmy to retake the lead. Look it out now. As they come over the finish line, jump. LaRocco right there. Emmick looks over. He knows it. Jeremy using that outside still, but he's not nearly close enough like he was in the past few laps to get in there and make a move. Now watch watch LaRocco through this section. He'll wheelie the front wheel and hop over there. But Emmick has the angle. No contact, just a good block pass. Yeah, LaRocco, though, up the inside again. Now Emig, oh, LaRocco bumps and comes off the bike. Jeremy McGrath leaps by him. I don't think the lap times really matter right now. It's just positioning. Breezing by the lappers. Cliff Palmer, Jeremy McGrath right on the tail of Jeff Emig. Now look at this. McGrath all the way on the inside. They pass up Todd to Hoop. We're going to have a great oh. battle here. As Jeremy McGrath almost took off himself. Toll on Jeremy. On, uh, 
Jeff White Emmett. flag lap. One lap to go. Can Emick do it? He's got a good, comfortable lead right now. Unless Jeremy can stay closer than this, Emick's got the composure to hold on to it. Emick is one win in Supercross history. Was Las Vegas. McGrath was not in the field. Lawrence for the heat race. I'll tell you, the fans are all out of their seats with good reason. Emig leading Jeremy McGrath in the final lap. Here's the second to the last turn. Emig flawless. McGrath is not close enough to make a move on the final turn. It is Jeff Emig. I don't believe it, Art. I don't think Emick does either. He jumped about 10 feet past the landing of that finish line jump, hands in the air. His first legitimate Supercross win, I think, in his heart, because Jeremy McGrath was not in the field in Las Vegas. And what do you do? In an eight-lap eight race, that's about a second a lap. So if he gets a whole shot, it could be all over. The light brown eyes of Jeremy McGrath as he peers over his shoulder. He has beside his skip his mechanic. And the fireworks go off. <laughs> Was this planned? <laughs> It really is. Well, that's what he is. Yeah. And, he, and they make such a great combination because he can read Jeremy so well. Ten seconds. The riders are ready. They're revving up their machines, and they're off. Jeremy McGrath, whole shot. They round the second turn. Ezra Lusk in a great position. Doug Henry in fourth. Emig is in fifth behind Henry. And then a pack of riders, including Stevenson, Lawrence, LaRocco, and Ward. But he fell into the hay bales there. We got a little protection from him. And here's our leader, Jeremy McGrath. No problems through the whoop section. Nice timing. Gasses it off the back side of that finish line jump. Over the double. Floating through the whoops. The guy's perfect. Uh, you know, I can't... I could follow him around for an hour and try to find a mistake, and he just won't. Emig was able to beat him in St. Louis, but if he comes around, as Ward was in the far part of the picture, as McGrath just breezes along. McGrath is uh, we're on a different side of the stadium as Larry Ward right now. Just a huge lead. Look back behind him. He can't see anybody. Lusk is he's not losing a lot of time, but a second a lap adds up quick when you're seven, eight laps into the race. You know, you think uh, Jeremy McGrath coming into this race, David Bailey, with the 100. Time. So he's just keeping it on two wheels and thinking about the outdoors. Jeremy's throwing it sideways. Here comes another triple. And the neck neck. Wow, what and a great the, shot. The crowd is going crazy. The checkers. And for Jeremy. 15 for McGrath. Pretty amazing. Jeremy McGrath. His 14th win in 15 races. What a start, what a finish. 14 out of 15, probably a record that, well, can you even break it? Well, there's only a, uh, can't, you can't find out till next year, I guess. <laughs> I'd like to think I can beat it, but man, I, I gotta be the luckiest guy in the world. You know, Honda gives me 100% effort and uh, my family, my friends, and especially my mechanics, Skip Mor Norfolk and, uh, you know, it's just great to have a crew like we got. You know, every week we come out 100% in full force, and uh, if I do my job, then most likely I'll be up here. What was the secret tonight? I mean, you came firing off the line, and you just stretched the lead all night long. Well, you know, uh, I mean, as the season rolled on, you know, from all the wins, and the pressure builds up, you know. It's not something I can feel until I end up losing the race, but tonight was just like the first race of a new series, and, and uh, I felt excellent. So relaxed out there, and uh, everything was perfect. Well, it's nice to know that you're human. Congratulations. This was a great year. Thanks for taking us along for the ride. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I'd like to thank all the fans out there for sticking with us, you know, and uh, especially Pace Motorsports and uh, all you guys for sticking with us. Well, there he is, Jeremy McGrath, your champion again four times in a row. And let's Hey, uh, we've got to talk to you. I mean, after all, you're the man that made all these wrenches turn, and uh, this thing's putting out some nice heat right now. It got cold out here, that wind whipping up. Congratulations on a great year, Skip. Well, thanks. I... Uh, 
You know, I can't say I've done it all without my, myself. I mean, there's uh, there's guys back at Honda that put in just as much effort into this motorcycle as I do and, and Jeremy does. Uh, Tom Job, machinist back at Honda, man, that guy's incredible. We can weld Jello. I mean, he's that good. He'll do anything, he'll make anything. Between him and Cliff White and uh, Brad, our parts guy, I mean, it's, it's a solid team effort. I mean, if it wasn't for the guys back in the shop doing their job, I couldn't do my job and Jeremy couldn't do his job. It's just, it's just a big team effort. You know the staggering statistic, guys, on this? He has now won, with this guy's help and everybody on the team, 72% of his Supercross starts. That's phenomenal. The celebration continues with Jeremy McGrath and uh, Emig and Ezra Lusk down below us. Uh, with moto number two. The a lot, David Bailey, as we get set for moto number two now. After winning it, Jeremy McGrath, let's see what he can do with the whole shot here. And it's Emig, Jeff Emig. Here's our leader right now out of the box, Jeff Emig. And he's got a Kawasaki teammate right behind him before Jeremy McGrath has a chance. Trying to pull up on the Kawasaki's. When that first lap, Emig was gone. He had a pretty good lead now. Uh, they've closed back up. I think Hughes feels the pressure from... Here comes Jeremy, moving into second place. Can he hold on to a great bar-to-bar -bar battle? Oh, it looked like they kind of locked elbows there. Make a statement in the 250 class. Right now, the crowd is anticipating now. How fast can Jeremy catch up with Jeff Emig? And as they went over the jump, they both sort of steered away from each other, but that was close. Emig number one, Jeremy McGrath number two as Jeremy has his sights on the number two bike right now. And look at that, a golf clap. <laughs> you know that Jeremy, before this lap, would you own him? Well, yeah, he feels pretty confident right now, and their lap times are uh, three, almost four seconds faster. Jeff, I'm not sure if he didn't seem like he could hold on the first moto, and pace being up, uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can hold on. Jeremy's strong, he knows he can run this pace the whole 30 cups. Skip Norfolk, never at a loss for words, David. No, he's always got the good response, and, and he's smart. You know, it's a good team. These guys, any place on the racetrack where it's really that much faster than Emig. Emig's going to have to make a mistake. He made a little one right there. Still not enough. He had enough power to come from the outside and seal off Jeremy. He came up short there. We saw Hughes bottom out there uh, and pull it off. I mean, if, if he crashed there, he must have came up way short and... Uh, you know, he, we know how many injuries he's had to those arms, and they have to take a beating on an impact like that. Back out in front, it's Emig number two and Jeremy McGrath number one. And Jeremy unable to really show him a wheel yet as they come over the finish line jump. Now uh, McGrath is going to pull out everything he can. And what I was beginning to say on that strategy is that if McGrath moves around Emig right now, that gives Emig a chance to retaliate. And he will, believe me. And if McGrath thinks he's faster somewhere on the racetrack, he might be smart to save that till the last lap and not give Emig a chance. My neck for 30 minutes, and it's no fun. McGrath trying to use the inside to get up that elevator jump. Oh, that gives Emig a big advantage. Emig able to double. I mean, he's always in the lead after the first couple of laps. Look how clean Emig is. Emig really accelerating through there. Brakes hard to take the tight turn. McGrath is not having an easy time of it staying up with him, especially if he doesn't take the double on the elevator. You know, when you do that, the momentum is all yours. And if he loses this here today, that momentum, it, it's only one race, Art, but uh, that's all it takes for that momentum to shift. And he's got to get around Emig to keep that. Right here is a crucial. You now he jumps it, so he's going to stay in contact. But still, kind of gets stuck out there on that outside line. So he loses a little bit of time, he, regardless of the fact that he still jumped that. Mechanic's looking on. He's just crossing his fingers. That's about all he can do. There's nothing Mechanic can do now. That bike's going to hold up. McGrath, though, putting the pressure on. This is breathtaking for the fans to see this duel all the way. Race long. Emig making the move. McGrath's mechanic, Skip Norfolk, and he's with Davey. Skip, it seems like every time Jeremy gets close enough to take a shot at Jeff, something happens. Either he doesn't do the uphill jump or Emig moves over on him. Yeah, well, he's, he's trying to inside line back here on that, what they call the elevator, I guess. And it's pretty hard and slick, and you just got to commit. And uh, I hope he's trying to set him up for something in there. So, you know, it's way past the halfway. We're down to three laps left. He's got to make it happen now, or it's not going to. Close, if not closer, uh, for any hopes at all of pushing Emig into a mistake. Over the finish line jump, it's boom, boom. It's that close. And here comes Jeremy McGrath to the inside, but Emig, just enough steam to take into that first turn out in front. He cuts inside, McGrath goes wide. It's looking like bar to bar, McGrath makes the pass! Oh, with less than two laps remaining. And Emig comes back, Emig hits him and goes down! 
So Jeremy McGrath is handed a gift. And uh, now, boy, what a relief. Emmett gets going. He's got some things bent on his bike. But uh, I think they got enough of a lead over Hughes where he'll be able to hang on to second place. But there's uh, Jeff Stan and a couple of fans. McGrath on a day that's not muddy. It's got to be a great feeling. About 50 yards to go to the finish. Up the hill, he can see the checkered flag waving as he crosses the finish line. Jeremy McGrath, his seventh straight moto win, if you go back to last year. Congratulations on another Gatorback win. This is your second year in the row in 250 class in the third of your career, right? Yeah, I think so. I won one here on 125. So, yeah, I'm stoked. Uh, that was a long, hard fight in the second moto between Jeff and I. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I guess when push came to shove, I was out in front. <laughs> and so the undefeated season goes on. <laughs> Yeah, it's good so far. I want to take it on in, and next week we have Daytona, and uh, if I ride this strong in Daytona, I'll really have to. Congratulations, Jeremy. Thanks a lot. Don't want to wait as Jeremy McGrath found out in Moto 1. The gate is down. We are away. Doug Henry on number 15. McGrath with a great start. There you see him on the red number one bike, and he's got all of the early leaders from Moto 1 right there with him. And Jeremy rode right around the outside of him. Now here comes Emig. Riding that back wheel, number two. Jeff Emig takes the lead. Doug Henry right there. He, too, goes around Jeremy McGrath, who bobbled coming down the hill. And this is where he got his first one last year. Right now, he's looking at the lead. If he can pick it up, depending on how these guys finish behind him, he could mathematically win the overall. And look at Jeremy McGrath back in fifth place once again. Late Al Holbert, a five-time IMSA Camel GT champion. He looked at Doug Henry right there. But this skirmish between Mike LaRocco and his Suzuki teammate Greg Albertine. Really starting to pour it on. Rocco goes by Henry for second. Can Henry respond? Oh, and Albertine is down. Up the inside, couldn't get it done. Dives behind Henry, then goes up the inside in this corner and takes away third place. So McGrath on a charge. Well, Jeremy McGrath has certainly left himself with some work to do after a fifth place finish in Moto 1. He is up to third spot right now behind the man on the right, right there, number eight, Mike LaRocco. Jeremy doing a beautiful job of getting over that triple jump. He came out of that corner before it on the inside. Get some help from slower riders or perhaps someone else. Moving up from behind, contact, and Emig is off the course. Wow, Morocco got in there and just punted Emig. It looked like Emig grabbed the hand. Morocco did a good job to set that up, and now here comes Jeremy. Two-way battle for the lead between LaRocco and McGrath. You see Emig held on to third place. Fortunately, didn't get tangled in that tape along the edge of the course. A moment ago, this is what Jeremy McGrath needed, but he needed Emick to drop further back in the top five. Right now, he's got LaRocco ahead of him and Emick behind him. And now he has LaRocco behind him. Jeremy got a strong drive out of the corner at the bottom of the hill. Working now. Jeremy McGrath out front. And if you'd like more about how to get the most out of your motorcycle, here's Jeremy's help. If LaRocco stays where he is, he has the advantage for the overall. The way it looks for Jeremy right now, though, isn't too bad. Winning the second moto kind of put an exclamation on things. If he can hang on to it, he wouldn't lose that many. Totally unpressed for the lead. In fact, I don't think we have any particular battles going on right now. The question is, where will everyone finish in the overall? Well, he's just got to keep his fingers crossed that the, the cards fall in the right places and he can pick up the overall win. That'd be uh, just about impossible with Morocco and Emick where they are. Uh, it could... It's just about a three-way tie for the lead. But if things stay the way they are, it looks like Emig may pick it up. Emig, of course, uh, beating LaRocco in this moto. If he can stay there, they'll both have a second and a third. But Emig's better finish in the second moto will break that tie. They'll both only pick up a point on the day of Jeremy McGrath out of his points lead. So for Jeremy, uh, having that bad first moto didn't turn out too bad in the end because he's going to win the second moto. And uh, he's only going to lose a point in the championship. So not that one's safe. It could be a good year for Doug in the outdoors. Well, with no one behind him but a lapped rider, a little twist of the front wheel for the fans, to the checkered flag comes Jeremy McGrath. You heard him say earlier, you have to put together two he good go photos. In the next event at Southwick now. Let's see who gets the whole shot. Will it be Jeremy McGrath or, again, number two? Oh, my goodness, Emig with another great start. But Jeremy's right there. You see 13. Up front in most of the first moto, looking good. Here he's in contact with the leaders. Nobody between them. He'll be able to uh, see everything that they're doing. Look at all the water splashing out of that. Oh. It's one of the off cambers, and all that water runs down in there. Something tells me Jeremy's not going to put up with that splashing. Lower before they get up to speed, and that berm forms right next to the tire. 
Looked like he just tried to put on his brakes and make a shoot right out of there. Yeah, well, it's hard to stay in that berm. He overshot a little bit, but it's the kind of corner where you can pull in the clutch and skid it in there and uh, not lose that much time. Jeremy, like this second moto, you begin to wonder right about now when and where Jeremy's going to make his move. He went up on the lawn. <laughs> Look at that. He's just looking for anywhere to miss <laughs> those bumps and to stay out of that ruse. There's no ruse from, Jer from uh, Emmett going into that corner, but Jeremy just getting creative. I mean, This race and others worked out every day. Jeremy McGrath kind of split it up the middle. He took some time off at uh, Lake Havasu for some uh, boating and skiing and, and also did some riding. Well, he says he needs that. And it's... Jeremy Albright telling Emick, pull away. Come on, focus. But already Jeremy down the inside cuts him right off. Here comes Emick back again. Can he hold on? Emick on the outside. Jeremy's got the edge. And Jeremy McGrath, once again, early in the race, taking over the lead. Excellent. He's able to do that kind of stuff and get away with it. Emick, on the other hand, with an outside line, had to choose a run he didn't really like, got a lot of height, and uh, lost some momentum to Jeremy. Emig not letting McGrath off the hook like he did in the first moto, but he just never had the great opportunity to make a pass. If you now the difficulty of a 30 minute moto through the heat of summer plus two laps as it burst to a supercross. Oh, supercross, is, I'll tell you what, at the end of this race, uh, he's really not having to dig very deep. I mean, he's probably, the breeze feels nice as he comes out of some of those uh, shaded areas, and he's not really having to put a lot of effort into this. He's just loving every minute of it, and knows that uh, he's put a few more points on his points lead. Oh, says it all. Looked like a private code as he put up his uh, fist there in the air. The checkers and the neck neck for Jeremy McGrath. The starting line, I'm sure he's shared all that with Jeremy. And once again, we'll see if Jeremy gets the whole shot. He got the whole shot of the first moto. The gate is dropped, and uh, Emig with a pretty good start. Swink with a good start. Jeremy McGrath is right there, number one out in front. Whoa, Emig jumps in front of him. Looked like Jeff went out of his way to make sure he cut across in front of Jeremy. Just did it again right there, and Jeremy hates that. I can tell you, he hates it. And that'll motivate him to get around Emig and just run away and hide. Emig McGrath. In that order. Last year, he just kind of lost his concentration. His lines weren't coming together. He made a lot of mistakes, and then he recovered with uh, a few guys making it easier for him by crashing to take the overall. These, and it's Jeremy McGrath trailing Jeff Emig. Emig doing a good job holding out in front, but now Jeremy has picked up the pace a little bit. Looks like he's looking for spots, accelerating through the sand. Harder than that, but. Uh, to see how it happens today. I think of the two, Jeremy's probably in better shape. Boy, as the second moto is well underway, it's it's amazing the way they go through that finish line stretch and all of those ruts and the fishtailing that goes on and still maintain some type of control. Different to configurations for a, a track like this. Well, typically you just use more what they call a sand tire, just a lot of space between the knobs and you don't have any problems, there's no rocks. Uh, just in that one corner, the only corner of the whole racetrack, you usually miss those if you ride a good line. I don't know if I'd be looking for rocks, though, going that fast. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised, because you're cruising baseball. That's, they, they dig up throughout the day. They do a good job to pick them up. That one corner always digs them up. If you hit one, you'll know it. Places like Unadilla, it's put people out for the season. Uh, Mike Kudrowski, I remember one year, broke the back of his hand with a flying rock. Yeah, these don't fly. They just stay there, and when you hit them... You... Do you really want it? He's trying to get him to focus out front. Uh, Jeremy wants it. He's patient, though. Very patient. Jeremy McGrath. Side by side. Who gives way? Jeremy gets the best line through the squeeze. Well, he positioned that way back. With his toughness. I think so, too. I mean, it, this is one of the roughest tracks of the season. And the way he hopped over that bump right there, I mean, he's just saving himself so much energy by riding smarter line that rut as you're climbing the hill. Here's Jeremy McGrath. It's been a long time since we checked in with Jeremy on the final lap, though. We'll pick him up as he's had a ride in the park on Sunday. You can see a section on the other side of the racetrack going the other way. There's four berms going around the corner. It's just like a rut, really. But it appears he's even going to greater heights in the sport, the tougher sport of motocross. A tired Jeremy McGrath, I'm sure, even though it was an easy victory as he comes over, Skip Norfolk as mechanic. Way to do it, 1-1. One, one. Well, uh, I had to follow him for a while there. He got inside of me on the start. I had a good start, but I think I faded a little wide. And uh, 
shooting was tough. You know, I, I couldn't get around him for a while. I was checking his lines and making sure I had a couple lines. You know, I had one line that I thought was a little bit quicker, and that's where I tried to press and get really close to him and eventually go by him. So now you've went on the hard stuff, you went on the dry stuff, you went in the sand. What's it going to take to beat you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm having a great time, and uh, I don't know. I think it's confusing some of these guys out there. So, I mean, Skip and I are working really hard in Honda, and, uh, you know, we do what we need to do during the week and come out and put a show on on the, on the weekend. All right. Well, congratulations on your fifth win this year. You know, it's like stepping on the back of somebody's shoe and giving them a flat. <laughs> Moto 2, they're revving up, ready to go. Let's see if Emmett could get another hole shot. He sure has put the traction down to get him recently. The chase to the first turn, and guess who? Number 2, Emmett, to change behind those two. It'll come out Larry Ward, number 6. Hughes, a good start. Number 5, just to the left of Ward. And that's Albertine to the right, number 16. Right away, Jeremy not following, electing to take this a little different line than Emmett everywhere. He wants to show him a wheel, and he wants to keep Emmett guessing line with Jeremy McGrath anxious to take the lead early and does so to the inside. It looks like Emig's going to lose another spot too. Albertine sneaks around, follows Jeremy around. Emig not going to give it up though. They're still banging. Look at they get stuck. Oh. It looks like Albertine has taken over second. Yes, he has. Team Suzuki number 16, Greg Albertine. Larry Ward in third. Mid-pack number 13, Phil Lawrence, a privateer. Not too bad of a start for LaRocco. At least he can see the leaders. They all seem to be running about the same pace in the early laps. Now look at all the time. He's oh, and Jeremy McGrath went down. This changes the whole complexion of things. Albertine is our new leader. Well, the complexion has certainly changed as Jeremy McGrath tried to come back now on Greg Albertine. To the right, Jeremy McGrath in the jump section. Makes things look a little easy, even though he jammed that last one. Looks back to see where Greg Albertine is. He knows he's got enough breathing room right there. And, you know, it's amazing the resolve Jeremy has to Getting out. Jeremy McGrath leading our motor number two for the 250s at Kenworthy. Can't keep a good man down. Every time he has a bad moto, he comes right back to win the next one or get the overall or both. And uh, it's just been amazing. He's won a moto, I guess, right? As every single race this season, he's at least won a moto there. Today, it looks like he's going to get the overall to boot. This would be his sixth overall victory on the season. Consecutive overalls before Mount Morris of this year. He won three straight this season, of course, but took a third at Mount Morris with a 5-1. Didn't take him long to get back, though, with two wins. And then two second-place overalls before this race here, which would give him another overall victory. That was pretty slick, too. He came over that jump there just before a little stair step uh, uphill thing he has today, and it's, he's still going to lose points to Jeremy, who had a real lackadaisical first moto, in his own words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, non motivated. And it looked like he was such as he came across the finish line with the checkered flag waving. Jeremy looks back, gives the thumbs up to the interview area. So Marty doesn't have to walk too far. Kind of a mini fist pump. I was going to tease you and, and say you'll do anything to get out of those mid-race uh, interviews, but uh, looking at the, your ankle and listening to your voice, the fall that you took in practice, uh, you're not in really great shape, are you? No, not really. Friday after, you know, during practice, it was about probably six lap or something. There's a jump up there that I, I, apparently, I thought I could make it up, and uh, I just didn't. I cased it right in the face of the tabletop, and... And uh, actually, I didn't even crash. My voice is kind of bad right now because I hit my crossbar on my throat, my voice box, and I couldn't even talk when I first did it, so it's a lot better. But but uh, the severe thing is my ankle. It's um, I have what they call a midfoot sprain, and supposedly it's supposed to be more painful than a broken foot. From Marty. All right, the last minute update on Jeremy McGrath. I uh, pointed my thumbs up to him, and he sort of shook his head sort of questioningly. He said the tape job right before he went out was the best it had felt, but uh, we'll have to wait and see whether he's going to be able to go. Requiring reconstructive knee surgery is Jeremy McGrath, you see, even though he's dominated, only has a 47-point lead on Jeff Emig. Mike LaRocco and Greg Albertine fighting it out. Bill, Minnesota, what a beautiful day it is for racing. Not too humid this time around. And the start, Jeff Emig with a great start, number two. There's Albertine, number 16, right at his left side. 
Albertine Henry, number 15, moving into second place now as they start to hit the bumpy area. I mean, he wants this title bad. He's willing to dig deep because his bike was bent up pretty bad. He still finished that motor respectively. Right now, teammate Ryan Hughes is not cutting him any slack, David. Uh, Hughes just as hungry, I think. He wants a win bad before the season closes out. I mean, he had the whole season really taken away from him with that back of his pants. I don't know if that holds true for that moment. <laughs> Here's Jeremy McGrath still in 11th place, of course. If you just tuned in, Jeremy was injured in practice earlier. He cased a jump, hit his neck on the handlebars, and injured his left foot. So just like LaRocco, Jeremy out there riding in a lot of pain. And it's a good thing he has such good timing because he's going to have to absorb uh, the blow, especially this whoop section with his right leg. And that's going to get tired towards the end of the motor. He's in 11th right now with about five laps to go. Yeah, he's, uh, he's right behind Taylor. Actually, I just heard on the radio he just got by Taylor. So that's going to put him in 10th. So that's what we came here for. He's got a lot of pain in his eyes when he comes by. He's, he's shaking his head. He's hurting, I believe. So uh, we're going to catch him when he comes off the bike, ice it down, and, and go from there. Boy, the complexion of a season can change so rapidly in this game because injuries are a part of motocross. It's sprinkling a little bit, and just in case it would have gotten a lot worse, that's what you would need to keep your vision clear. Just like when you watch car racing and they move that film across the camera to clear the vision, same thing for the rider. You yank that string a couple of times, and you get clean vision. And, of course, on this track, you could get sandblasted. Absolutely, especially if he can win. Uh, it just gives him a little more leverage. So the longer he holds on to that contract, <laughs> the more money he'll probably get. An easy victory at the end for Jeff Emig. Ryan Hughes in second. Blake LaRocco, Jimmy Button, Phil. Well, the only time Jeremy McGrath has been out of this transporter was during the first moto. You can see the end result, the ice pack back on the foot. Courageous run. I mean, uh, you know, in fact, Wes McCoy said, the one thing you had never done in your career was ride hurt. You just did it. Yeah, well, I mean, I like to uh, have the type of attitude that, that I'm not a quitter, you know. And, uh, I mean, if I can score ninth or 10th in the next moto, hey, that's, that's 24 points that uh, Jeff's not going to gain on me. And, and that's what I want to do, you know. I don't want to quit. What he must accomplish in these two motos. Uh, because if he were not to ride, Jeff Emig mathematically could take over the points lead, especially if he wins this moto. Jeff Emig again, the whole shot. There's Jimmy Button 100, another good performance. Jeremy McGrath, a much better start, though, in about fifth position on the inside there. Remember, he told us he wants to stay out of trouble. That means getting out in front. Henry in second, Button in third. Yeah, I'll just stay where he's at, and maybe these guys will make mistakes, but I don't think he's going to take any chances or push extra hard to pass him. He'll just stay where he's at. David, have you ever lost a title because of injuries? Well, it's, it's hard to say if I lost the title for sure or not. 1985 in the 500 Nationals against Brock, we both had injuries, but uh, yeah, it, it cost me a title, I think. He had We've had so many passes back and forth. Jeremy McGrath in fourth position, and Jimmy Button wants that spot. Jimmy Button to the inside. He's going to get around, and it's a weird play. Oh, look at Jeremy. Has a better line through the corner, but going wide right there, he's going to give it up. He's looking for the smoothest line everywhere. In practice prior to the race, his worst moto finish since the third race of last year. A ninth place finish in moto number one. And he's just trying to save some points here today. I think he's going to try to pick up all those points. Next to three may make the difference in the end. The checkered flag for Jeff Emig, his first sweep of the season. He's done everything else. I don't see why not. Oh, I'm telling you, quite an effort for Jeremy McGrath. Our hats are off to him as well as our winner, Jeff Emmy. Jeremy McGrath leads by only 23 points. We're going to have a battle down to the end, David. I think so, and I think what Jeremy proved to everyone is that he can ride injured. He did it in both motos, salvaged some points. I know that I can win, and I think everyone else does. You know, it's just a matter of being injured. It's one of those things. You know, I, I tried probably a stupid thing at, you know at Millville and tried to jump up on that tabletop and come up short and felt like my darn foot fell off so uh you know I've been on the on the recovery for the last two weeks I've been to the doctor every day at uh you know Dr. Toy he's been doing a great job with my foot and you know it's it's just a matter of time there's only so much you can do break too, Walt, so they don't roll into the game just just to uh, be sure that you don't wheelie coming off the line Skip Norfolk very quiet now uh, giving his last minute instructions to Jeremy McGrath as the 32nd board goes sideways and we're off. Photo number two. Emig not that great a start. Oh, we've got a new man out front. It is Rich Taylor number 48. Amaradio number 30. 
Henry make up for that 11th in the first moto, but looking at LaRocco and where he's positioned, if you look back behind him, there's Emig. Larry Ward in second place. Out in front, Doug Henry, Mike LaRocco, Emig, McGrath, and Amaradio, your order. Well, the heavy favorites, LaRocco, Emig, McGrath, all right there. They're starting to work their way up quick. LaRocco on the inside line. He's shaping up to be a great race. <laughs> Here in Washougal, Jeff Emming has already cut Jeremy McGrath's lead in the points race down to 11 after the first moto. He's got a good opportunity. Whoa, Jeremy McGrath, who had moved up to fifth place, has gone down, and he doesn't look in good shape, David. Well, he's already limping on that bad foot. He's torn the boot buckle loose on his left, on his left boot. I think that's just a slippery area right there, and it's kind of a little plateau as you're making that left-hand turn. And... Oh, he looks stiff and sore right now. Slowing down toward the mechanics area. Uh-oh. The McGrath went into those backwoods in fifth place. The points leader emerging a rather battle. It looks like Jeremy's decided to pack it in here in the second mode. This might cost him the championship. If Emmett can move up and get 25 more points, it's going to give him a 12-point lead. Going last four moves, we're going to try and get a word with... Uh, Either West McCoy or if you can't skip Norfolk as soon as you get a chance. The gate drops. We're underway. Moto number one. Let's see who gets the whole shot. It is Jeremy McGrath on the inside, number one. Emmy Albertine, Ward, LaRocco, all in the fight here. David Bailey, you think, well, Jeremy McGrath has got the whole shot now. There's no way he'll crack into the pressure. He's got the speed to just take away and go for the victory. Jeff Emmy behind him, though, now has that confidence that he has seen Jeremy McGrath not at his best. Well, the odds are against Jeremy right now. First of all, he's injured. Jean-Michel Bale, certainly one of the most technically beautiful riders that we've seen in Supercross and Motocross. And here's one of the best that ever lived on the track right now, leading our first moto. Jeremy McGrath, Jeff Emig, Mike Morocco, the top. In the points lead, he was just chasing. So, uh, you know, I don't feel any pressure. I just want to get out there and ride. Last week was a disaster, and uh, I feel 100% better this week. And you can tell it on the track right now, David Bailey, is Jeremy McGrath out in front of moto number one, came into this race eight points down in the championship. We're really starting to open up a lead now over third place. Emmick applying the pressure to McGrath. Looked like Jeremy, for most of the moto, had a comfortable lead. Wasn't that worried, but you can hear the crowd now. Jeremy knows Emmick is right there. Let's you get right in there and hopefully take advantage of an of a unfortunate situation for the leader, but... Jeremy's not going to give this one away. It's, it's going to have to be bad luck at this point. Jeremy McGrath coming off his first DNF of his career that we can remember. And that put him behind the eight ball as far as the points are concerned. So it's all uphill now for Jeremy McGrath, showing a lot of character and courage, coming toward the checkered flag with Emig on his tail. Toward the finish. Good tight cut by Jeremy McGrath, holding onto the control of that machine. Here's the checkers coming up. Jeremy McGrath did what he had to do in the first moto. Gutsy ride. Where did that come from? Well, you know, it's crunch time, Davey, and uh, I mean, I've, I've been off the pace for the past two weeks, and finally I'm confident again, getting some good starts. Me and Jeff went in the corner, you know, close together, and I, I got him finally. You know, he's been whole shot in every race, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be running up front again. Get the win here, and Emig and uh, Hughes would be second. That pushed Jeremy even further back. Okay, we're set to go, and it's off for Moto2. Who will get the whole shot this time around? Jeremy in great position on the inside. The points chase. McGrath with another hole shot. Emick mid-pack right now. He can get his points lead back right here. If things, less things, less Emick puts on the ride of his life. Greg Albertine, though, is doing a pretty good job in second place, keeping the heat on Jeremy McGrath. Pressure like this, those two are going to pull away. Boy, does this make an exciting situation for next week at Delmont, Pennsylvania. The final round, the championship is going to be decided there. Got a little more confidence and poise to take it all the way to the checkered flag. So I'm, he's feeling the heat from Albertine right now, but that's probably a good thing. That's going to help him get a bigger lead so he doesn't have to deal with Emick later on. Takes the checkers, and there is a happy young man. He did all he could do here this afternoon. The checkers for Jeremy is sixth sweep, is seventh overall. All right, Jeremy. You did what you had to do today, a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, you know, I uh, got some starts today. I wasn't really nervous. I wasn't concerned. My, I uh, suppose my foot's good to go. You know, I 
I rode strong in the moto. After Albie started fading back a little bit, I started uh, just kind of cruising out there. And, you know, those guys were catching me at the end. But, you know, Jeff made a crucial pass there at the end. So we're two points away. You know, it's only one moto, and we got two motos to go. So I'm glad I'm back on pace, for sure. You control your own destiny, and you're going into your favorite track of the circuit for the final round. Yeah, Steel City's, the, you know, the best track out there, as far as I'm concerned. Binghamton was great today, but uh, I always have good luck at Steel City. And uh, me and 1-800-COLLECT and Honda and all my teammates, and uh, I'll have my mechanic back. He had a baby this Friday, so congratulations to him. So, uh, you know, we'll be on, on fire next week. Uh, man, you were like a real champ today. Thanks. I don't think anyone said it any better. Jeff Emig, quote, it's as good as it gets. The points leader, Jeff Emig, barely. Especially between these two riders. They have the majority of the whole shots between them. Jeff Emig, more successful later in the season. They're off for the first moto. Emig with a good cut to the inside. Emig will get the whole shot. Where is Jeremy? Get out of there. He just positioned himself perfect. Stayed just to the inside of Albertine and went down. Jeremy came out smelling like a rose there. Now the battle is set. Both those guys right together. I don't think they're going to get a challenge from behind. Uh, they, they got too much business. This championship of an attitude would not be able to hold a lead like this with the dominant Jeremy McGrath right behind him. Well, I think that's the key, though. It's in years past. Lately, Jeff has the confidence. He doesn't worry about what's going on behind him, although today is a little bit different situation. You can bet he's really nervous, but he's got the start he needs. Pressure's on Jeremy right now. He's the one that's behind. He's the one that's got to find a way around to hopefully pick up a one-point lead going to that second moto. Emmy trying to hold his own as we go to the helicopter shot to see the lines. Jeremy McGrath to the inside has the edge, and oh my goodness already, Jeremy has made the break himself. Here comes Emmy right back again. Can he resecure the lead? Oh, he almost lost it right there as his toe caught and went back with old moto. You wear him down. He's done it before, but I think that was a significant move right there. Jeremy caught him, passed him, probably figured, okay, now I'm in control. Laughter last week, won both motos, going away, but Emig is here to fight. Got him right back, and that mess with your confidence. Boy, a battle of the minds underway, as well as a battle on the track with Jeff Emig and Jeremy McGrath. Now the two are significantly pulling away from the third place rider. And that's going to do a lot for Jeff Emig's confidence, too. What a relief. A little mistake there by Jeremy, too. Uh, to get passed by Jeremy, then to pass him right back and reestablish the lead, and then to look over your shoulder, see that you got a little gap now. That's going to help. Jeff Emig, our leader. But it doesn't take long for number one to come in the picture. Jeremy's actually closed that gap back up just a little bit. He had that one spot on the track where Emig was leaving the door wide open. In fact, that's the corner right there coming in. Jeff comes in nice and tight. Jeremy squares it, cuts across the ruts. Starting to try a little different lines here and there now and actually close the gap back up, keeping the pressure on Emig. That's what he's got to do. There's a long time left to go in this moto, so he's, he's not in bad shape just yet. But coming down to the wire, he's going to need a lot, be a lot closer than this. Norfolk to see about the McGrath strategy. All right, Skip. Not a lot of lap riders here at Steel City. Is Jeremy worried about that? Well, no, you know, if you're out front, that's good for you. But if you're in second where we're at, you're kind of wishing to have some guys out there to race and slow things up and take the leader off his pace. But this way, it's racing. You know, the best guy's going to obviously win here this moto, barring anything weird happening. We're down to uh, five, maybe six laps. They're pretty close on time. So it's going to have to happen now or it won't happen at all. Jeff Emig on the final lap. It's not that easy an item to win back-to-back -back 250 titles. In fact, it hasn't been done since Jeff Stanton in 1989 and 1990. That's what Jeremy McGrath is gunning for. He wants that number one plate back. He's going to have to do it in the second moto, it looks like. But a Jeremy with the most wins on the season. Only a short period of time now before Jeff Emig turns that corner and sees the checkered flag. Very popular here at the Delmont track. Jeff Emig has won the first moto. The first round of the chess match is over. You beat him. Uh, it feels real good. You know, we were going fast. Just trying to keep my lines and uh, learn new ones along the way. So, you know, because I knew that he'd be out to get me there on that first lap, and he did. Unfortunately, I got him right back. Yeah, we saw that. That was a really close, and you almost land on him off that jump. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, where neither one of us is going to give up. And, you know, if we happen to come together, well, you know, then that's just part of racing, I guess. 
Now for the second moto, you still got to get second if Jeremy wins. Do you feel up to it? Sure. Well, I feel like winning. That's what I came here today. You know, the only way to guarantee the championship is to win both motos, and that's what I plan to do. It's just about as perfect as a race as anyone could ride, but it wasn't perfect enough. Yeah, it's true. Um, you know, Jeff got out in front. I got right behind him. I passed him first lap, or actually maybe it's the second lap, and, and he kind of like cycled back by me. So then I was behind him. I, you know, I, was, I rode a good race. I was pushing as hard as I could without being erratic and making too many mistakes. It's just he wasn't making any mistakes either. So, um, you know, it's just uh, one of those things. I mean, I, I was trying my hardest, and he was trying his hardest, and that's how it goes. The bike's revving up, getting ready to go here for moto number two now for the 250s. They're off. The all-important hole shot. Look at the acceleration on the inside by Emig, and he breaks just in time for the hole shot. Where's Jeremy McGrath? Nightmare for McGrath right now. Emig out in front. Jeremy's somewhere maybe 10th, 15th, as best I can tell. Emig, Henry, Albertine, Taylor, Keeney, Bradshaw, Palmer. It's easier for us than it is when you're out there. Uh, Battling with Corey Keeney right now. And you can see the roost, a great camera shot there. Right, and while he's trying to fight his way through these guys, Emig's pulling away. Saw Emig just go by the other way. That's a big lead. We figure these guys are pretty much even today. How the heck's he going to make that up? More riders that say faster riders? Well, it, as long as he's moving past him like this, it's not a problem. And you, that's why you see him so desperate trying to get by these guys early. Because later in the race, yes, they can slow you down a little bit because their pace is slower. If you're behind him in a section like this, where Jeremy's capable of going a lot faster. You gotta just sit there and wait. You're in mm -hmm. I'm not gonna tell him where McGrath is. He just wants to win this race and I want him to win this race. He's been working really hard and he wants his championship and he knows what he has to do and I don't think it matters where McGrath is. Otherwise, so far, so good then. So far, so good. Thanks, area. Jeremy's definitely got the pressure on. You can see how far away Albertine, he's already heading up the hill now. Here goes Jeremy now. He's got the clean drag strip uh, move on Doug Henry. Steel City, Delmont, Pennsylvania. Our leader is Jeff Emmy. If he holds on to the lead, he wins the 250 title for the season. If he places second, he still has assured himself of a victory. Yeah. Jeremy McGrath in third place, trying to battle up, trying to get closer to Albertine, who just went by. Skip Norfolk pointing at Greg Albertine, saying, Go Moto, as Jeff Emmy comes around the finish line, getting the white flag for the final lap. Albertine has really pushed Emmy in second place. Jeremy McGrath has been unable to really mount a terrific opportunity line. What a proud moment it has to be for this young man and for the entire Team Kawasaki. Yes, he's saying to himself, I did do it. Like a champion, you gave it all you had. Yeah, it was just, uh, didn't get the start again and I was back that time. Jeff did one of his classic moves, you know, cut over on me. But uh, he rode a great race. He did what he had to do. I came out here and, you know, I have no regrets. I, I was at home doing what I had to do and making sure that I had no regrets after today if I didn't win, and that's just the way it works out. How would things have been different without the injury? Well, it would have been much different. You know, I had a 50-point lead. That's a whole race. Um, believe me, I've learned my lesson from that, and, uh, you know, in the previous years, that won't happen most highly motivated team is surely the United States. After winning 13 times in a row between 1981 and 1993, they were defeated in 1994 by Great Britain and in 95 by Belgium. They really want the title back. 250cc rider in the team is Jeremy McGrath. Once again, the United States 250cc Supercross champion this year. McGrath is back in the nation's team with just one goal, to erase disappointments of the last two years and bring the title back home. We lost the title the, the um, three years ago and the guys have been trying hard every year. It's just, the, I mean, the way circumstances have turned out and uh, I'm happy to be back on the team this year and, and uh, I think, you know, I wasn't here last year or the year before just because, you know, we raised so much at home. But uh, I feel good this year and I'm looking forward to it. I, I want to have the uh, trophy back to us for sure. So to race two of the three, this between the 125s and the 250s as the field heads for the first corner. Let's watch out for any first corner accidents. Yes, again, several riders go down. The Belgian team wanted to see what they needed to see. It's their man, Monique Bevert, leading the race ahead of Jeremy McGrath. The rest of them coming through, but Jeremy McGrath now has taken over the lead. Meanwhile, the Czech Kucha is another retirement after falling. Replay of his crash 
and it's not going well for him today. <laughs> the end of the second lap, and McGrath has opened up quite a lead on the 250. Monik Bavertz has come back into second place, though. <laughs> this course really suiting the Americans with its supercross style jumps. <laughs> But McGrath is the man to be. He's already opened up a huge advantage, and the American Supercross champion is on his way to victory, perhaps, once again. Up front, Jeremy McGrath looks untroubled, but even the best can sometimes make mistakes. A big lead, but McGrath just getting the rhythm a little bit wrong and takes a tumble. The American off his bike, and a chance for a change of the lead. Monique Levert's going past. And Bavert's now with the lead of the race. Getting it wrong. Monik Bavert's now the leader, but McGrath is not far behind, having restarted, and he's now fired up again. So he's now chasing down the Belgian once more. Bavert desperately needs to win this race to give the Belgians any chance, but he can't hold off the attentions of McGrath for very long. The crowd really getting behind McGrath's recovery. And he goes through, back into the lead once again. Bavert says nothing he can do about it. But Jeremy McGrath comes through to take the win ahead of Monique Bavert, Steve Lamson, Andrea Bartolini and Sebastian Tortelli. Has taken a giant step towards winning the nation's event outright. We feel our team's really good this year. We feel really strong and uh, you know, hopefully we can have another another race like that one next time. The final race, that between the 250s and the 500s gets underway. Everybody charging to the first corner, and this time, everybody makes it through more or less safely. Up front, it's a good start for Shane King, but also for Jeff Emig, number four. Shane King, number 19, just with the slight advantage. Deep Malak is up there as well. Joel Smets, and watch out for Jeremy McGrath. Shane King leads from McGrath now up into second position. And another American up there too, it's Jeff Emig. And Yves DeMaria is in fourth, ahead of Deep Malacca, Monik Bavertz, and Joel Smets. But the battle for the lead continues and develops between Shane King and Jeremy McGrath. McGrath, who dominated the previous race, and he comes through once again in the, the lead. The number five, the 250cc machine, now ahead. And just look at that, how much he's opened up already over Shane King. Lap number four. And already Jeremy McGrath has opened up a sizable advantage over his nearest opposition. Monik Bavertz is next up in second place. The leaders come through, but can Monik Bavertz do anything about this American? He couldn't do anything about him in the other race. About that, but the Belgians and the French need to push hard to try and take the runner-up position. McGrath is unstoppable up front, though. He's built a huge lead. He's riding towards the third victory for the American teams in these races in a row, and the title is getting close. And McGrath able to put on a bit of a show for the fans in the final few laps. wins ahead of Bavertz, Demaria, Pitbara and Jeff Emig. Delight in the American camp. The title comes back home. Well, you know, I tried really hard that time. The bike was working good. And, uh, you know, everything was perfect for me. It was great. Loved it. I'm happy about that, you know. Uh, we finally get the trophy back. It's been a long time, for three years now, and uh, I think this year we had a, we had a great team, and 
and uh, that's what happened. Do you realize if we were in the old scoring system, we'd have nothing but aces today? Six in a row. That's awesome. They're the greatest riders in the world. I'm very proud. Actually, this is a milestone for America. You know, we've been, uh, we've been kind of talked down for the last couple of years, and I think it was a lot due to a little bad luck, and a little bad luck goes a long ways. Today we had a little bad luck. We recovered. We came over here, took care of business.